Thank you, Dan. Welcome, everyone. It's six minutes after the hour of 6 a.m. It's Friday, the last day of the year. Uh, year, the last day of the month. <laughs> it's <laughs> not the like last it day. To be the last it's day, last day of the day. year. It's the last day of the month a, for us, anyway. Four day holiday. What are you talking <laughs> well, about? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's another uh, day tomorrow, I think, uh, <laughs> in this month. But last day for us this month, and. Uh, we are not going to be here on Labor Day, so uh, we'll be back on Tuesday with um, football tickets for you. So we'll have That's some con- we'll have some football ticket contest going. So uh, for the first uh, several games, so yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah, it should be fun. So uh, stay tuned for that. We'll be announcing that on Tuesday, and we'll have a couple contests: uh, one on uh, smartphones and one on our landline phones, and uh, we'll get you fixed up with some tickets and you can sit together and co- compare how much you enjoy the morning show with Tom and Shane. That's great. Now, uh, do, are we considered reporters, columnists, opinion writers? What, what are we? We're, um, we are opinionists. We are commentators is all we are. Commentators. We're not so, journalists. We're not uh, newsmakers. We're, we're here so, to uh, put, information out and let the listeners decide or talk about um, that issue or whatever issue we bring up. Right. So we can make any accusation we want. We can. Yeah, we can accuse anybody of anything. Well, I can't because we have hate laws. Well, that's true. Yeah. Well, you're, you're making them in Bozeman, so maybe that's okay. No, it's crossing the airwaves. I'm sure it's illegal. Oh, it probably is. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. You know I'm straightforward about this stuff, and I, know. Uh, I, 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 I have to start out the show today. I cleared it with the mayor, the host, the great All right. eagle man, All right. uh, because I'm so disgusted. So to all those listeners that are out there and any and anyone you know that listens to the show, uh, please tell them that that uh, the eagle man's uh, uh, co-host, uh, Captain Chaos, Shane, apologized for the ex- Prime Minister Kim Campbell. Now, if you can believe it, first woman prime minister, she takes the seat because uh, Brian Mulroney leaves. Uh, She's the first uh, baby boomer to get it. And the third shortest serving prime minister, 132 days, goes into an election and loses it. And man, from BC, unfortunately, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. And then last night she tweets, "Are you ready for this, folks?" And I'm. This is what I'm apologizing for. I, 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 I am embarrassed that a, an ex prime minister of our country would tweet that she hopes this hurricane devastates Mar-a-Lago in in Florida. That to me is just an insult, and uh, it, uh, you know it's above uh, it's above her you know position that she wants held for her to say something that as terrible as that. So there you go, uh, a straight lie. I told you this when uh, Trudeau. Came out of the last uh, G7 meeting a year ago, I think it was, was lied about tariffs and that they didn't have, we didn't have any. Yeah. Anyways. So now I'm down for two. <laughs> the, the Eagle Man, nothing, Shane, too. You need, you need to take Steve O's advice. We need to trade some Democrats for you and you can just come down here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. The progressive liberals would do well up here. I'm sure they would. So they'd be, yeah. they'd be just as happy up there with uh, oh, God, yeah. your free health care and all the other uh, freebies yeah, you get exactly. for being Canadian, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we have everything that, that your progressive liberals possibly could want. So yeah. if they couldn't come here because what would they look for? I mean, they, they, there's there's nothing for them to get. Well, that's true. It's yeah, already good. yeah, yeah. They'd they'd be voting for keeping it the same. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> keeping Canada the same again. Exactly. <laughs> that's what we'll vote for. All right, I like it. Well, let's take a look at our Gallatin Valley weather. Today, we got a slight chance of rain between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m., then a slight chance of showers and thunderstorms after that. Mostly sunny with a high near 80 today, only a 20% chance of any precip. Tonight, mostly clear with a low around 52 and uh, light winds. And then on Saturday, a beautiful day, sunny with a high near 84 Uh, Calm winds all day, and then Saturday night, mostly clear uh, with a low around 54. And then on Sunday, same story, nice and sunny with a high near 88. 
Calm winds and uh, Sunday night uh, mostly clear with a low around 54. And then Labor Day, same story, sunny with a high near 84. Uh, There's only a slight chance of rain before midnight. And uh, it'll be partly cloudy with a low around 50. And then for your commute back to work on Tuesday, it'll be sunny with a high near 80. And a slight chance of rain before midnight on Tuesday night. But um, no real... uh, percentage of precip so it uh, will probably uh, skip us and whatever and sunny and a high near 81 on wednesday what a nice labor day weekend for a change shane yeah that's that is excellent excellent forecast temperatures around the area right now are pretty warm Uh, livingston's uh, checks in at 50 degrees and clear manhattan is 51 three forks 51 uh, let's see, Galton Gateway, they're up to 53 over there. Ennis is 51. Big Sky is 48. At the airport in Belgrade, it's 51. We're right at 54 degrees here at our downtown studios at 12 minutes after the hour of 6 a.m. So that's your weather for for today. Our poll question of the day, should uh, former FBI Director James Comey be prosecuted? Should he be prosecuted? And uh, yeah, I saw you put that in there. You know, you could be. You know, I, I'm just well. Okay. All right. All right. Well, you know how I feel. I said uh, yeah. yeah. Our poll question from yesterday: Have you ever been in a tornado or a hurricane? Of course, we got uh, Hurricane. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, D something. <laughs> Dorian or Dorian? Yeah, yeah Dorian is a Dorian. Yeah. Uh, Yes, uh, uh, 46% of you said yes, and it was scary, and 43% said no, thankfully. And uh, 9% of you had other opinions. Uh, One person said yes, they've been in both. Uh, Yes, but it was not scary, just part of nature to be respected. And the uh, the third one was no. I was hoping uh, too when I was on, uh, when I was OTR. So, oh my God. (laughs) So, there you are. So that's our uh, that's our uh, uh, poll question of the day. So, should uh, former press uh, should former FBI director James Comey be prosecuted? And you can uh, vote on our uh, chat line at AM fourteen fifty KMMS, or well on our chat app or our app, I should say. It's not so, the chat app; it's the so, whole app. So Monday, okay, so Monday's question should be. You, you today you asked if he should be. Yeah. Monday's question will be: So, do you think he will be? <laughs> will be prosecuted <laughs> for uh, down the road as uh, more information becomes out about the FISA warrants and uh, McCabe. Yeah, that, and that's, I think, yeah, that's McCabe right. and all yeah. that. It'll be interesting then, if if they don't do anything with McCabe, then we might as well just pack up our you know our tent and go home. Constitution. Again. Yeah, yeah, we'll just pack up the Constitution and just, uh, I don't know, throw it in the fireplace, I guess. Yeah, no, pat, yeah mail it to the millennials. Yeah, <laughs> we can do that for sure. Yeah. Well, let's see. Uh, speaking of uh, uh, history, we weren't, but we will. Yeah, that was a pretty a good segue, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> Well, all the way back in 1797, Frankenstein author Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley, and more commonly known as Mary Shelley, Mary Shelley uh, was right. born in London. And uh, that's pretty amazing. You could uh, make that kind of a thing, a uh, scientific uh, book. Ideas, yeah. Back in that, way back when. You know, we're talking about cloning today, I guess, but that would have been a type of cloning. Well, yeah, because it had only it been less than when, when she when the book was published and the republishing in, uh, yeah. in her lifetime uh, publications of it 1818, 1823, 1831, because it was so popular. So, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, the, it was published three times. But uh, you know, Franklin was doing this uh, study of electricity with the kite and the key. <laughs> yes, he was. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and, and uh, you know, had you had the French that. You know, some of the science and Italian scientists studying electric. Yeah, pretty remarkable that she was mm-hmm. that well read as a woman. Oh, my God. I know. In that time, uh, geez, she's lucky she got published at all. Well, <laughs> that's what's so incredible. Yeah. But a lot of it has to do with uh, her, her father, William Goodwin, an English journalist, political philosopher, and novelist. He is considered oh, one of okay. the first 
experts of ultimism and the first modern proponent of anarchism. Okay. They're okay. The, uh, and so this is the guy that came up with anarchism. Oh. Right, like anarchy. This is the guy who said, go into the street and riot and tear it down. <laughs> okay. Goodwin is most famous for two <laughs> books that he published within a space of a year. So, you know, he, uh, and an inquiring concern of the mind. Mm -hmm. So he, he, he was, and her mother, Mary Wollstonecraft, yeah. what a name, yeah, Wollstonecraft, yeah, yeah, was an English writer, philosopher, and advocate of women's rights, of course, of course. until the late 20th century. Wollstone's craft's life, which encompassed several unconventional personal relationships. <clears throat> wow, there you go. Oh, so she, had those she, was a, on her she was a slut, in other words. <laughs> yeah, and she had an A on her, you know, brand on her foot. Yeah. Received more attention than her writing, uh, than her writing, uh, than her husband's writing, actually, at the time. But mm -hmm. the, the other thing that was really quite fascinating is is that uh, her brother. I mean. She had a brother that was also quite brilliant and and very well known and considered, you know, you know, what one of the great writers of the time for philosophy and, and poetry. Mm -hmm. So clearly she came from good DNA. Yeah. And well. and wrote a good book. But I don't think she wrote many other books. I mean she did, but I don't mm -hmm. think no they were nothing the um, like that. So yeah. well, um yeah, she was uh uh well, I guess she had an in with uh, Pop and uh, whatever, so uh, they probably opened some yeah. doors for her, I would guess. So. <laughs> yeah, definitely daddy issues yeah. with that one. Yeah. Night <laughs> yeah. Nightmare my, as my dad in green at yeah. seven feet tall. <laughs> yeah. There. All right. We, we've got to take a break here. We've got to take care of our ranchers and farmers and our cab drivers and truck drivers and anybody that brings you clothes, booze, or clo uh, food. And uh, we also want to hear from John Deere and Macy's. Uh, boy, let's. Uh, this is this is the sale weekend. So uh, get uh, get dressed in your Macy's finery and get down to John Deere and get your tractor and uh, head for the field. So mm -hmm. yeah, we'll be right back right after this. Twenty three minutes after the hour of six a.m. It is Friday, uh, August thirtieth, twenty nineteen. Fifty four degrees outside. Reminder: Shane and I will not be here Monday. Uh, we're going to take the Labor Day off, so um, we'll have a three day weekend, and uh, we'll uh, see you back here on Tuesday with football tickets and a big contest to get uh, football tickets every week if you want them, and uh, it's a pretty good deal. So yeah, I'm excited about that. So. Uh, let's see from our text line, Shane, 478-8298. Uh, Shelley wrote Frankenstein after Lord Byron uh, challenged several of his friends to write a sort of ghost story. Then Frankenstein's monster was born. From that challenge, just another interesting piece of trivia from Tam. <laughs> there you go. So, <laughs> Well, thank you, sis. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's your Tam or not, but oh, okay. <laughs> it was Tam, but anyway. Uh, let's see, uh, 1862 on this date, Union forces were defeated by the Confederates at the Second Battle of Bull Run in Manassas, Virginia. Important, but we got to go back two years. Remember, it was April 12, 13, 1861. The Confederacy fired on Fort Sumter, like within a couple of weeks of Lincoln becoming president of the United States. I mean, mm -hmm. this, yeah, it is bizarre. A anyway, and then... Shortly thereafter was the uh, first battle of uh, of, of uh, uh, Bull, Bull Run. Run. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it, it it was amazing because you know uh, it, several of the famous commanders of the South, P.T. Beauregard, Thomas Stonewall Jackson, and and uh, even Robert E. Lee became famous. And the the people of Washington literally went out in their buggies and everything and had a picnic on the hill to watch Manassas, the first battle of Manassas Bull Run. And uh, the Confederates routed the Union there. And uh, that wasn't a good deal under the command of Winfield Scott. You know, Lincoln had five commanders of the Army of the North. He, he had really bad time, not a lot of guys to rely on. And then in this battle, you know, once again, you know, the commander was John Pope another new replacement and they routed the union ar ar army and uh, if it wasn't for the uh, reserves in washington dc they would have taken uh, washington and the war civil war would have been over but wow hmm. continued well, on for continued on for another two years yep. regrettably yeah 
Well, in 1893, Huey Long, uh, the kingfish of Louisiana politics, was born in Wynn Parish, Louisiana, and uh, he was a big deal in the South. Uh, boy, uh, they oh, yeah. uh, um, they really took over uh, the whole culture of America down there. That's I mean, right, and he, he was the 40th governor of Louisiana, 1928 to 1932 during the Depression. Mm -hmm. uh, very corrupt. Became a U.S. senator and... He, in 1932, and the first U.S. senator to be assassinated in 1935, while sitting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He was. Anyway, yeah, he was quite a corrupt. He was a well, I, I hate to say typical, but typical of Louisiana and the mm -hmm. South. Yeah, uh, he was a pretty corrupt sort of caricature. <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it, it's those Southern guys. They, they, they're you know, they're pretty profound with their in-your-face stuff. You know. Oh right? yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, he was from, a Democrat. He was a Democrat. Ha have to point that out. Yeah, we have to do that. Uh, from our text line four seven eight eight two nine eight. Uh, sorry, Shane, different Tam, but you can call me sis. I've been called worse. Uh, so. <laughs> All right, sweetheart, I'll call you sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, there you are. So, <laughs> why not? Yeah. Well, in, uh, on this date, nineteen oh five, baseball Hall of Famer Ty Cobb made his major league debut with the Detroit Tigers. Played with him his entire career, I believe. And um, yeah. hit leader until uh, Pete Rose came along and broke it. Uh, and uh, Ama uh, you know these guys, uh, of course, they were considered gods in baseball back mm -hmm. then. But of course, boy, yeah. they, they they would have been on Mount Olympus today with their batting average. Wow. I know, I know. Yeah, they were pretty pretty good players back there. And uh, Cobb, uh, second baseman for the Tigers, uh, used to sit on the uh, dugout and file his spikes. Yes, for for, right. for the benefit of the second baseman on the opposing team, that when I come sliding in there, pal, it's going to be like I'm razor. Gonna it's baby, going to be yeah. like razor blades. Uh, so you better get the hell out of the way. I, I think that he was a foot slider, not a hand slider. That's right. right. And he never went in head first. He went oh, in with right. his foot in your face. Yeah. Well, in 1918, another great uh, baseball Hall of Famer, Ted Williams, born in uh, San Diego, the last person to uh, hit 400, a uh, great hitter, and uh, also uh, left baseball for a time to uh, go to World War II. And, uh, Amazing guy. Yeah, he was, yeah. A real American. Yeah. Well, and while he was there, maybe uh, 1941, Nazi forces began a siege of Leningrad during World War II that lasted nearly two and a half years. So we're going to have to take a break, though. At, okay. This is the bottom of the hour. So if you want to talk about Nazis in Leningrad and uh, two and a half <laughs> years, we'll, we'll do it when we come back. So <laughs> more power to you, man. <laughs> All right, uh, it's the bottom of the hour, Montana State News, Fox News. Brooke Foster Weather, uh, Gazunai with Jacobus, and uh, some other uh, cool stuff. So uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back after the news. 25 minutes for the top of the hour. It's Friday, August 30th, 2019, 54 degrees outside. Looking for a high in the mid to upper 80s today and uh, should be sunny. A little rain later on in the evening, but uh, otherwise a pretty nice day today. About a 20% chance of rain in this evening, but uh, enjoy the day. And it's a three-day weekend for most people, but uh, hey, if you're working on Labor Day, uh, more power to you. Time and a half or whatever <laughs> yes i don't know uh did you have anything you wanted to say about the siege of leningrad on this date in 1941 uh during world war ii that lasted nearly two and a half years that's a long time for a siege to last uh, shane well nothing other than how horrific it you know people were eating bread made of sawdust by the end because yeah. of the germans but uh it was uh you know stalin came along and saved the city with his army and Changed the name to Stalingrad, so there you go. Well, uh, Leningrad's uh, Stalingrad sounds better than Leningrad. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 1945, General Douglas MacArthur arrived in Japan and set up Allied Occupation Headquarters. Uh, he said he would be back, and he came back. Well, this is a guy we have to spend one minute talking about. He was remarkable. He was yeah. uh, born January 26, 1880, April 5th. 1964, Little Rock, Arkansas. He uh, he retired as a five-star general and field marshal of the Philippine Army. 
He was the youngest chief of staff of the United States Army during the 1930s, in the, in the, and uh, he, he was uh, in World War I as a, a captain. He went to West Point, as did his father, and uh, came out a captain, not a lieutenant. Um, ma ma amazing guy. I mean, when you look at what he did to save the United States in, in a couple of major situations, um, he was promoted to, a ma uh, to ma uh, from major to colonel and became chief of staff of General Pershing's 42nd Rainbow Division. Now, that was a division that had been sitting on the U.S.-Mexican border since 1850, and it was from uh, upstate New York. The 42nd Division has served in many wars and been well decorated with, with uh, division uh, flags. He was, uh, like I said, on the Western Front, known to get out of the trenches with his long coat on and his pipe, you know, corncob pipe, and walk across the field with, you know, his uh, his saber in one hand and his uh, 35 caliber six-shooter in the other and, and never once got <laughs> shot. Like, I mean, I loved – I mentioned that to you just the other day. I was just – anyway. Uh, he was quite a guy, yeah. <laughs> he was quite a guy. He uh, – the Incheon um, Harbor invasion uh, to save Korea from the – you know, the Chinese communist was huge when he was brought up by MacArthur from Japan. I mean, from uh, President uh, Will, Harry Truman brought him from Japan to take over the campaign again, the Philippines, which was successful. And, of course, he got fired by <laughs> President, <laughs> President Truman because after he took back half – after he took back the entire peninsula of China, he wanted to nuke the Chinese at the Yellow River, <laughs> and that was too much for uh, – <laughs> <laughs> for President Truman, so I had a thought about running for president and uh, didn't, you know. Yeah. But uh, rem remarkable military history, tr tr really. Uh, he's one of those generals that made that changed the world, you know. Mm -hmm. He did. It, Japan wouldn't be what it is today because he went and reorganized the whole place and yep. the government and their constitution, as you know. But well, on this date, in 1963, a hotline communication link between Washington, D.C. and Moscow went into operation. Uh, the red phone on the desk, supposedly, uh, if that thing rings, it's World War III, huh? Oh, well, or, or hopefully not. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 you know, and it came about, uh, you know, because of the, uh, you know, the the Cuban crisis mm -hmm. and uh, the, the need for, you know, to uh, have a relationship. Uh, there was never really a phone line. I mean, that's just... You know, yeah, just, yeah, they didn't really actually have a red. It was actually there. The <laughs> Yeah, it was the first implementation. Uh, it was the first implementation used teletype equipment, mm -hmm. and shifted to a fax machine in 1986. And then since 2008, Moscow and Washington hotline has been a secure, a secure computer link right. over which messages are exchanged. So, mm -hmm. you know, they've gone from uh, Hotline, phone to uh, telefax, fax, smoke signals. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now they just wave from Muster, uh, Alaska, yeah. right? Yeah. They, uh, Sarah Palin <laughs> waves yeah, at just... Sarah Palin signs uh, what exactly. <laughs> what's going on in, in Russia. Exactly. Yeah. 1965, the album uh, Highway 61 Revisited by Bob Dylan was released. Every time I think about Bob Dylan, I wonder if he would make it on. Uh, uh, America's Got Talent, or this, uh, you know, the. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. His singing, uh, I'm not sure if they would pass him and, through. <laughs> and, and his look. I mean, I was going to say, yeah, he wasn't a very nice looking guy. The older yeah, he, yeah. he didn't age well either. Or he's no, not he, aging he, well, I should say. Yeah, but, right. yeah, he's had a bad hair day his entire life. Yeah. Uh, but uh, one of the first people, the one of the first and few people to refuse the Nobel Prize prize for yeah, music and, yeah. and literature and uh wouldn't take the money which is pretty amazing it's yeah. like a million bucks i think now but, yeah i don't know what it was in 65 but that was certainly if it was a million bucks in 65 that's a lot of money today so, <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what it was back then but anyway in 1967 on this date the uh, senate confirmed the appointment of thurgood marshall as the first african-american justice on the supreme court and a lot of people didn't like thurgood all that much they, uh, no. they had a uh, difference of opinion with him uh, he was one of those guys they wanted to impeach along with earl warren and some, <laughs> some others <laughs> yeah he died at 84 so mm -hmm. you know uh, ginsburg should be looking at that probably in yeah. 1993 but you know I, um, as an associate justice, 
um, he was involved in the Brown versus Board of Education decision, and mm-hmm. and and um, you know he wrote, uh, I believe, the opinion for in favor of that. I, I'd have to check to make sure, but yeah, yeah. he was a he, he, amazing writer. That, that one thing I, everyone always talks about, or when you read about the Supreme Court, he was one of these brilliant writers, you know, that uh, everybody had so much respect for. Smith versus All White, All Right, and Shelley versus Kramer which we know about that, and Brown versus Board of Education. These, these were radical se- segregation um, mm-hmm. uh, decisions that, that he was involved with. And uh, John F. Kennedy appointed him, and uh, he came from the United States Court of Appeals, so in the Second Circuit, and uh, just ama- to, he was appointed to, to the Second Circuit by John F. Kennedy, and then Lyndon mm-hmm. Johnson, of course, appointed him, Yeah, uh, United States Solicitor General, and... Uh, and then George Washington, uh, uh, George Washington, uh, su- uh, he was succeeded, I believe, with, by Clarence Thomas. And we, we know how that went, right? Yeah. <laughs> George Washington? George H.W. Bush, sorry. <laughs> I was going to say. I, I think they were a little, a little bit apart. <laughs> or or George, yeah, right. George was a better uh, visionary than I thought. Yeah, I was uh, a little slip of the the history thought. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I have no clue how to pronounce this guy's first name, but in 1983, Guan Guan uh, S. Buford Bluford Jr. became the first African American astronaut to travel into space when he blasted off aboard the space shuttle, shuttle Challenger. So, yeah, and then you know they're getting ready now with plans with a revisit to the moon and now uh, the first woman. Yes, to go and yeah. land on the moon. first woman's yes. going up uh, here sometime soon. So, yeah. Well, in 1989, uh, a lot of us remember this, federal jury in New York found Hotel Queen, uh, the Queen of Mean, uh, Lore- <laughs> Leona, Leona. Leona Helmsley, yeah. uh, guilty of income tax evasion, but acquitted her of extortion. Uh, but uh, income tax evasion will get you too. So. That's right. Well, she, yeah. she was uh, pretty good. She... Leo Panzier, she married 38 to 52, wealthy. Mm-hmm. And Joseph Lubin, wealthy, twice divorced him. And then she fell in love with good old Harry Hemsley, yep. who was at the time the largest commercial real estate holder in New York with a number of hotels and uh, apartment buildings. Mm-hmm. And she was known as the Queen of Mean yep. because of uh, the, the way she, uh, her flamboyant personality and the way she treated her employees. But you know, it's like an it's like the Capone story. You know, they they nailed her for writing off her personal underwear, like lingerie, as a business expense. That that, that and, and it's, All yeah, right. She spent, I think it was two years or something in jail, and then a couple of months in house arrest. Yeah, she, yeah but not nineteen months in prison and two months under house arrest. Yeah, she. What a calamity that was! I mean, that was all over the New York press every day. It was one. Oh yeah, it was. It was on the news constantly uh, when she was up for grabs because uh, nobody liked her. Man, she was rude oh, to God. employees. She was rude to everybody. Anybody she talked to, she was pretty rude to. So, all right, we got to take a quick break. Uh, we've got um, well, little things going on here. So we'll be back in ninety seconds. Hang on. 13 minutes before the top of the hour, and as you just heard, the Bobcats open up Friday night against uh, Southeast Missouri State, and uh, I have a connection to Southeast Missouri State, Shane. Wow. Yeah. They uh, are one of two universities that uh, use my first book as a textbook at their Excellent. university. Excellent. So. Well, how- well, that's wonderful. There that's you are, totally man. Totally cool, man. Yeah. That's the fine. other one. The other one was the uh, University of Alaska. So you know Sarah, Sarah Alaska, Sarah, yeah, Palin? Sarah Palin. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. We we hang out all the time. Yeah, yeah. 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 I figured you had to have some kind of influence. Yeah, there. I got a lot of influence <laughs> on her. So. Well, in 1990, uh, President George H. W. Bush told a U.S. news conference that a new world order could emerge from the Persian Gulf crisis. The first guy to mention the new world order that uh, we've uh, conspiracy theorists have gone after forever, that uh, somewhere along the line, uh, we're going to have a small group of people that are going to run the world and 
<laughs> I don't know. You can't. Shane and I don't always agree. I don't know how you're going to get somebody to step up to the top and run the whole place. So yeah, I don't know. I, I we got too many that, cultures, too many uh, stuff going on. But uh, I don't know. Anyway, uh, 1993 on this date, the Late Show with David Letterman premiered on CBS, and uh, he was passed over for Johnny Carson. Left NBC, said, screw yes, you. Man. He used to follow Carson and thought he would be the heir apparent to that show. And, of course, they uh, they went another direction, as they say. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we're with, going. With, with, a, with a cool dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very liberal guy. Uh, belonged on CBS. Oh. <laughs> Certainly. But, but, you know, or NBC, thing, either one. <laughs> that's right. But, but the interesting thing about this is that when he went to CBS and the success that he had there, it resulted in all these other nighttime shows. That's true. Yeah, because, they, because they, I, you yeah. know, Johnny Carson had it had it locked. Mm-hmm. You know, he was the only night, show, you know, late night show. Yeah, and and he pat or he was resi- or quit, and then they put in J Lo, J Letterman rather. J Leno, yeah. J Leno, mm-hmm. oh, J Letter, J yeah. Letterman, J yeah. 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 Letterman. Yeah. <laughs> you're having you're having the same problem I had yesterday. <laughs> Thank you, Righteous Eagle, and that's twice for me today. I'm yeah. one more, and I'm out of here. I know. Okay. Anyway, the point is, of course, is you know you had Conan O'Brien and Jimmy mm-hmm. Fallon and Jimmy Kimmel and yeah. all the other boys. They decided to show up because they figure, oh, there's money in this late night time. Yeah, they make big bucks there for uh, not doing a whole lot, and uh, writers uh, do the work for them and all that stuff, and uh, so. Uh, yeah, it's, well, uh, it's fascinating to you know you and I were there, sure, and we watched Johnny Carson during Watergate. Oh yeah, you know, it, it, it was respectful humor. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like he, he he was the first person to really attack in the media Nixon on mm-hmm. on John, and, and and everybody said you know if Johnny Carson's picking on Nixon, he's out of here, right? Yeah. Like I remember that. Like, it was, <laughs> But, but he much. never, he was never insulting. I mean, you know, he always no. had that great humor, you know, and, mm-hmm. and that the writers were so good, but, you know, regrettably, you know, in the last 10 years, the, uh, the, uh, late night shows, late night shows, you know, cooning over uh, Obama and then just detesting Trump. The, the contrast is just incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's surprising, uh, that, uh, we've, We've come a long way, and some of the uh, younger folks listening to us, uh, you know, I, I would suggest going over to YouTube and look at some of the Carson shows, look at some of the Carson monologues and things that he did back in the 70s and 80s and uh, whatever. Uh, you know, the, he was there 30 years. So, know. Um, you know, you got a, you got a lot to look uh, look at there. And, um, yeah, his uh, he, was, he, was, he was the show, if you were a, budding comedian you know you oh. wanted to be on carson that was your goal that or musician. that would yeah that would take you a long way uh being on there and particularly um if after your uh act you got to go over and sit that was oh, the yeah. big deal that was even that a bigger was- deal yeah if you got to do that so uh it was it was quite a time in uh in television history but uh now, now, if I could just mention one thing, because we didn't get a chance to get to this yesterday, and I think we need to recognize this guy, Charles F. Kettering. You know, this is one of the most brilliant guys um, uh, as an American inventor, engineer, and businessman who died August 29th, 19, um, or November 25th, 8, 1958. He was born August 29th, 1876. And he was known as Charles Boss Kettering. And, uh, you know, he was at that time when so much was happening. He was the holder of 186 patents. He was the founder of Delco, head of research for General Motors from 1920 to, tw- to 47. Um, he, he developed and, and had a, the patent on the electro, electro, electro starting motor and leaded gasoline. He worked with DuPont, responsible for Freon. He, he developed and, and had patents on refrigeration, and, and he invented air conditioning. Um, he, he, you know, the, he developed the bug aerial torpedo for the, for the military. Uh, he, he, uh, he advanced the development of two-stroke diesel engines, uh, revolutionized the locomotive and heavy in, industries with the 12-cylinder, and founded Kettering Foundation 
which he ended up giving away all of his wealth at the time. But now this is just a great American. I mean, just, I had to mention him. Sorry. Yeah. No, uh, he uh, he and uh, Edison uh, really changed the they world. Were friends, uh, yeah. They were they were big they, deals they, back yeah. then. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, no one really cares, but in 1999, residents of East Timor uh, voted for independence from Indonesia in a U.N.-sponsored ballot. And uh, who cares? Well, it ended a <laughs> Nobody even knows know. where East Timor is, let alone Indonesia. <laughs> so. Okay, South Pacific. Yeah, well, go. yeah, that's, that's, that narrows it down, doesn't it? That narrows it down. Yeah. yeah. Somewhere near yeah. Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. Well, uh, look, in the last 30 years, uh, the world has reduced the number of civil wars or wars going on mm-hmm. in the world by half. There's only about 16, 17 wars going on right now. Uh, yeah. You know, right. War, yeah. You know, in the world, you know, pe- people don't realize it because the media doesn't talk about it. But no. Yeah. yeah. People are struggling all over the world, killing each other. It's they are. Sad. That's that's what's going on. Well, birthdays today, Shirley Booth, uh, American stage, screen, television, radio uh, actress, born on this date in 1898, died in 1992. And uh, let's see, I've got a couple others here. Of course, we talked about uh, Mary Shelley. Uh, She was Mm -hmm. born on this date in 1797, wrote uh, the novel Frankenstein. Uh, Let's see, Huey Long, we also talked about him, American senator from 32 to uh, 35 and governor from 28 to 32 in Louisiana. Raymond Massey, born on this date, a Canadian-American actor, director, and uh, producer, Uh, Mm -hmm. been in a lot of movies. Fred McMurray, of course, My Three Sons, uh, born on this date in 1908. Uh, Mary Poppins. Yeah, died at the age of 83. no, No, he wasn't in Mary Poppins. Sorry, that was the other guy. Yeah, that was uh, that was the other McMurray or the other Fred. <laughs> <laughs> so, Three strikes, I'm out of you're here. You're out of here, man. None of this was on your resume. Exactly. <laughs> you were going to be a stumbling, bumbling. I yeah. mean, you're starting to sound like Biden today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh my God, what another blunder he pulled! Wasn't that yeah. amazing? Well, what no, can I tell you? You gotta feel bad about that as a vet. It's like those guys yeah. in Great Falls, you know, claiming they were. Oh my goodness. Well, anyway. what makes me feel bad? He's he's a year and uh, ten days older than I am. Older. And, older, yeah, yeah. So oh. uh, in a in a year from now, if we're still on the air, am I going to be a bumbling fool by then? <laughs> Do you think more than I am now? Hey, all I know is he couldn't host this show for fifteen minutes. <laughs> He'd blow it up. <laughs> well. I don't know. We uh, we have our moments here, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, but they're fun. They're well, fun. Well, we do have fun. Yeah, that's the yeah, thing. We're never in denial. Yeah. You know? we, we, we acknowledge our mistakes, <laughs> which is important. That's true. Uh, back in uh, 2005 on this date, Hurricane Katrina struck the Gulf Coast with devastating force, killing more than 1,700 people, flooding New Orleans uh, after the uh, – or New, New Orleans – uh, after the New Orleans? Uh, yeah, New Orleans, after the city levees failed, okay. and uh, there was a lot of talk about that. Uh, Ray Nagan, the uh, uh, mayor of uh, New Orleans, uh, was saying this is going to be a chocolate city uh, again. We'll build it back and whatever. And I don't know the uh, they they, play, they uh, placed uh, people over in uh, Texas, I think Houston. They took them oh, over yeah, to Houston. Big- yeah, they moved them all. Over to Houston and the and the 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 per ap, per capita income of Louisiana raised about ten points, <laughs> clearing out the ninth ninth ward there. So, well, that's right, and, and none of those people really have come back. So uh, yeah, they're but, happy uh, in Houston. I, I, I'm sure most of our listeners know this, but one of the biggest problems, of course, about uh, New Orleans, it's on the delta of the Mississippi, and, and yeah. it's below sea level. So it is, it, yeah. A lot of it's below they, sea level, so they got to have so the they, levees they knew there. This was going to happen. Yeah. You know, Why build a city there? You know, I mean, you know, I I I can understand, I guess, uh, the port. Um, you know, you to bring goods and services in, but. Put, so pe- put people it, it, up higher or something. That's right. It's, it's, it's like like yeah. people in the tornado alley, you know, Texas, Oklahoma, yeah, yeah. Panhandle. Like, 
<laughs> why don't you build underground or you know or, <laughs> like in the well, side of a hill you why know don't you I mean? why don't you build dome houses that'll just exactly. kind of go around you or over you you know you don't need to build these two-story stick buildings that <laughs> you know <laughs> trashed everything should be dome uh, <gasps> shaped or you know you would think somebody would have designed okay we, well there was a guy in um oh gosh where was it in florida i think uh it was a couple of years ago, had the hurricane proof house that yeah. it was concrete and pillars and, you know, all this stuff and all the houses around him are decimated and he's sitting there looking pretty good. Got all well, the... I, I like, like that village in the Lord of the Rings, right? Yeah. I mean, they actually built that, you know, in, mm -hmm. in uh, New Zealand. Right. Yeah. It's, it's like, why not build underground? Like, yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, I don't know. I guess people want the sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's yeah. what, there yeah. you go. Yeah. Yeah. Should, all houses should just be ground level and uh, you're you yes. three stories underground. And yeah, exactly. you, know, you got artificial light coming in from somewhere. I don't know. But anyway. All right. Uh, that wraps it up for the first hour here. We've got the county commissioners are going to come in at 8 o'clock and we're going to talk a little bit about two things. We're going to talk about the uh, Law and Justice Center. It's going to be on the ballot. And we're also, uh, we want to talk about the ha the tax hike. Uh, for the um, uh, the rest home. So we'll be talking about that with the county commissioners at 8 o'clock. So stay tuned for that. And uh, coming up next, uh, local news. What's going on in Bozeman, Livingston, Belgrade, Three Parks, Manhattan, all around the area here. So we'll be back with that right after the news and other cool stuff. So hang on. Cool stuff. Thank you, Dan. Welcome back, everyone. Six minutes after the hour of 7 a.m., Friday, August 30th, 2019, 54 degrees outside. We're looking for a high in the mid to upper 80s today and sunny and nice outside. And uh, coming up at the 8 o'clock hour, the uh, county commissioners are going to join us. We're going to be talking about the uh, Law and Justice Center. It's going to be on the ballot. And also we want to talk about the uh, rest home because uh, we've got a tax hike to uh, – kind of help out with that. So we'll be talking to the uh, county commissioners about that. Uh, two newsworthy events, I guess, before we get to the local stuff. Uh, Hong Kong invaded by uh, Ch mainland China's uh, chain uh, last night, I guess. They yeah. uh, said, hey, we've had enough of this. So uh, we got October 1st coming up, uh, <laughs> you know, our 57-year celebration of uh, our, our wonderful people's dictatorship. So we want to make sure that uh, we we don't have a bunch of unrest there. And uh, depending on what happens with that military um, uh, occupation as Calm to what, yeah. well, what the U.S. Well, will we'll, do, what the U.S. We'll will say, do. Yeah, with we'll, that, with we'll, that. we'll save it to 7.30 in the money yeah. block and talk about the black swan. True. Yeah, we can do that. And uh, the other thing um, that's uh, going on uh, from our uh, app chat uh, line. Uh, you can get to the app chat, of course, on your AM 1450 KMMS app. It is absolutely free. The app chat button is right next to the listen button on your smartphone. Uh, so uh, if you don't have our app, go uh, just do a search for AM 1450 KMMS app, and uh, you'll find it, and you can download it, and it's free. And uh, you can listen to us anywhere. You can get the news. You can get all the stories we post on our website and all of that stuff. And, and you can get the Eagle Man's poll of the day question, which everyone should answer today because of what happened yesterday with the mm -hmm. uh, Inspector General's report. Uh, yep. Our poll question uh, 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 of, yep. of, of the day, should uh, former FBI Director James Comey be prosecuted based on what you know so far? Yeah. Right. So today we want to know if you should. We want to know you if today we want to know if you think he should be prosecuted, and then Monday we'll ask you if you think he will be prosecuted. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Let's see. Tom uh, says no. Tom says no. I say yes. We'll uh, see. Okay. All right. Uh, from our uh, app chat line, uh, what do you guys think about Tom Steyer? So uh, Tom oh, Steyer, of course, running for uh, uh, president and uh, didn't make the grade, uh, spent $12 million, I think. Uh, let me look it up here. Uh, yeah, spent $12 million in um, Facebook ads and couldn't yeah. get, uh, he got the donations, but he couldn't get the polls. <laughs> so. Yeah, born in 57 in Manhattan. And, you know, these he's one of these uh, progressives mm -hmm. that has, you know, been, ha did, has done very well. 
a private school, Buckley School for, you know, mm -hmm. you know, primary school. Philip Extra Academy, because of high yeah. school, they didn't want him to have a problem as parents. Yale mm -hmm. University, summa cum laude economics and political science, Phi Beta Kappa, and uh, oh, by, he was the captain of the Yale College soccer team. Wow. Went on to Stanford Business School, and uh, where he was an R.J. Uh, Miller Scholar, which means smart. Uh, went to uh, Stanford University, uh, started at Morgan Stanley in 79, left there after uh, Stanford Business School to Goldman Sachs to 83, 85. Then in 86, he started the Farlon Capital Investment Firm, which manages $20 billion worth of other people's money. But the funny thing about this guy running for president of the United States with the talk of the Green Deal, biggest money that uh, Farlon Capital made was uh, acquiring Mollusk Creek Coal Mine of Australia, which produces over 70 million tons of coal annually. I love this. I love it. I just yeah. love it. Yeah. So he's, he is uh, Mr. Green. <laughs> yeah, Mr. I got I said I got a coal in my stocking, but other yeah, than that, I'm all right. Yeah, right. Well, uh, yeah, Tom Steyer's Mega Millions uh, debate gambit flops, according to uh, Politico, and also uh, Facebook ad prices surge due to barrage by Democratic hopefuls. So uh, here are the uh, everybody's buying Facebook ads as a cheap way to get their name out there to uh, millions okay. of people. You know, you spend uh, X dollars a day. Uh, Tom Steyer claimed it, uh, it cost sixty dollars to get a dollar donation. Sixty bucks to get a dollar donation. So that's how desperate these people are to get, to get yeah, some hey, schmuck in Iowa to give them a buck. <laughs> you know, uh, under the rules of the uh, uh, Democratic uh, Party, mm. um, if if no one t if no one gets the uh, nomination on the first ballot, mm -hmm. um, all the uh, People there representing different politicians are, are released. So, I'll, I'll, which means it's an open uh, uh, convention. And now that means they can take uh, any any nomination from the floor. Yeah. And if another state uh, if another state uh, seconds it, they mm -hmm. have to have a vote to accept the nomination. Yep. Not 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 to pick them, but to accept them. And then mm -hmm. they're now in the pool. So. If if I'd been one of these billionaires, I'm just talking political strategy here. I would have done the best to create the possibility of an open convention, right? Oh yeah, I'd <laughs> campaign. Like a, you. Spend my money downplaying everybody else. So, <laughs> or, or or you know, doing yeah. the whole Facebook, Twitter thing, in you know, to try to keep as many people <laughs> yeah. in, 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 out of the race as you can. No, in the race, so it would be a you know, open convention. Yeah. You know, well, yeah, I guess it would be if, uh, yeah, if you didn't have, if you had too many people, that would be true. So, yeah, yeah, that was. Uh, uh, let's see. Also from our text line, uh, there's some um, uh, regarding uh, Comey being uh, the Inspector General. Uh, uh, report came out that said although he. Uh, uh, violate a lot of policies and things of the FBI. Uh, they don't see any smoking gun there that's prosecutable at the moment. So uh, uh, there's more to this story if they can get Comey to turn and implicate a higher position. So maybe, I don't know. Uh, uh, the big deals we're talking about, of course, McCabe, Clapper, uh, Comey, and um, who's the other guy? Uh, Clapper and the Brennan. Brennan. Brennan's Three the students. other guy. Yeah, Brennan's the yeah. other guy. So if we can get yeah, the, well, I, Interesting. Uh, two things that are interesting. By the way, I'm halfway through the report. I'm reading it. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the second thing that's fascinating was Rosenstein's, you know, mm -hmm. tweet. You know, and and he basically shot the guy in the head. You know. Yeah. So uh, again, I think Rosen, Rosenstein has turned. I think he is the mm -hmm. squirrel in the basket that's uh, ratting on everybody. Yeah. Uh, from our uh, day in history on our app chat, uh, former uh, uh, Fort Sumter was fired on because they wouldn't allow embargo merchant ships to enter Bay to trade. Uh, the North wanted the goods and, uh, of, uh, and other countries offered more money. Uh, the Confederates uh, tried to destroy the fort. So, yeah, or destroyed yeah. the fort in three days and secured trade with uh, England and uh, the French merchants. So, And the rocket's red glare. Yep, bombs bursting in air. Amen. So, all right. Uh, I think we got our app chat and our text line cleared up, so we can move on to maybe uh, some local stuff here. That uh, 
one of the uh, one of the new uh, uh, or local news, I guess, the Bozeman Airport are going to add direct flights to Philadelphia and New York. I think they've already got some yeah. Dallas and some other places, but uh, the uh, uh, American uh, they're going to open flights to Los Angeles uh, using a seventy six seat plane. Uh, from June 4th uh, through September 8th. So if you want to go down to Disneyland for a vacation, uh, you can fly directly down there and uh, have a nice uh, Disneyland or Universal Tour or whatever you want to do. Uh, New York and Philadelphia flights will operate with 160-seat uh, Boeing 737-800 aircraft on Saturdays from June 6th through uh, September 5th of 2020. So uh, you got that coming in uh, June. So uh, they, um, we are getting bigger and uh, more and more people are using uh, our airport chain. We're the busiest airport in Montana. And, you should uh, be baby. And we you, should. You, yeah. You got the Eagle man yeah. in, in town. And mm-hmm. of course, Yellowstone Park. That's it. Yeah. We got a lot, a lot to see here. So uh, let's see. In other news, uh, we've got a conservative advocacy group. Uh, is uh, challenging Montana's uh, Governor Steve Bullock executive order that requires organizations that receive large state contracts to report political contributions that exceed uh, $2,500, even if those disclosures aren't required under federal election laws. In other words, uh, the libs want to know if uh, you're your uh, state contract is with some uh, conservative, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, low-life scumbag. Right, like like your governor is going to sign a contract for anything with a, conser- with a, re- a conservative <laughs> business. Like, yeah. sure, that's going to happen. Yeah, yeah I guess uh, uh, Tom Steyer could buy a coal mine here, I guess. Uh, yeah, exactly. That'd be no problem there. So, uh, yeah. Uh, The challenge was filed Tuesday in the district court by the Illinois Opportunity Project, which said it plans to spend money during the 2020 election cycle to urge Montana gubernatorial candidates to repeal the executive order. Mm. So good for them. Let's let's get that out of here. We don't need that. Let's see. uh, Well, let's take a break. Uh, We need to take a break here. And. um, it's only ninety seconds, so we can handle that. I think, Shane. What do you What do you think? Well, I'll get a couple of breath or two in. All right, there you go. All right, <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. Hey, as I formerly mentioned, in ninety seconds. So stay tuned. Eighteen minutes after the hour, it is Friday, August thirtieth, twenty nineteen. Fifty five degrees outside. Looking for a high in the mid eighties today. Shane and Tobin, half man, half amazing, in Vancouver, British Columbia. Tom Eagleoff, your morning mayor, and this is the KMMS Morning Soapbox with Tom and Shane. And uh, uh, the other thing we should probably mention about Tom Steyer, yeah, yeah, let's applaud with our uh, jazz fingers. <laughs> the other thing we should mention about Tom Steyer is that uh, uh, he was the largest donor to the Democratic Party in uh, 2016. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, he was far and ahead. Uh, head of uh, Adelson of the Sands Hotel and any of the other Republican uh, big donors, but uh, yeah, he was he was the top guy uh, for the Democrats, but uh, unsuccessfully, uh, you know, coming out on top. And also, he spent a ton of money on um, impeachment to try to uh, encourage uh, 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 leaders or lawmakers to uh, bring impeachment proceedings against Donald Trump. And uh, done that uh, to uh, try to sway political opinion to write your congressman and say, impeach Trump, impeach Trump. And so far, that hasn't uh, gone anywhere, and I don't think it will. Uh, If they do try it, they'll try it next year. Uh, But uh, I I don't think it's going to. Yeah, I think it's going to do them more harm than good if they try to do that. But yeah, and I, I, and I have to mention this since you brought him up again. Yeah, but uh, you know, it's it's sort of inter- he is a philanthropist, uh, mm-hmm. obviously. Yeah, and uh, he started. A, 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 but you know, One Roof Inc., a B corporation, a, a social enterprise business that was just designed to put to build one roof internet centers in small rural towns in rural India and Mexico. 
you think that he he would have cause maybe to spend that money in rural America, mm-hmm. you know, to, to provide people with, uh, you know, uh, roofs over their heads, literally. Yeah. Uh, also, he he happens to own the beneficial state bank of the in the Bay Area hmm. uh, that he uh, opened himself, uh, commercial banking, of course. Right. So yeah, yeah. Again, here we go. <laughs> you know, another liberal. You know, uh, they, these people amaze me. They really do. I mean, just. The hypocrisy is beyond me. I, mm-hmm. I, I, I have to laugh. It's just, it's just too funny. Uh, let's see. From our text line, uh, let's look at some uh, text we got here. Uh, 478-8298, if you want to weigh in there. Uh, Comey is a lifelong registered Republican who did his job and angered the corrupt lying president who didn't like his sins being investigated. Comey leaked documents to protect himself. Sadly, a good, honest man like Comey, Mattis, Kelly, uh, don't last in this corrupt administration. Well, you know, he had the uh, top offices of the, and the headquarters of uh, the FBI in Washington, D.C. Oh, it's called the J. Edgar Hoover Building. I can't <laughs> believe they have that name on that building. I, I know. This is the guy that blackmailed presidents for 50 years. Mm-hmm. And, you know— th- the, the, the underlying thing about this invest, uh, in, uh, investigative general's report that I find fascinating is this whole meeting with the president uh, before he, he, you know, when when he met with him in January before right. President Trump was in the transition before he became president. Uh, you know, I, 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 based on what you read, it, it looked like a clear attempt to set him up to be blackmailed. I, really, I, you, when you read what they did. And, uh, you know, the, how he got it, he had a computer in the car, you know, you know, to, to talk with the people back and write up exactly what he talked about. I, I really think the intention was to go there and get Trump to admit to something, you know, with the intention of playing the, the J. Edgar Hoover, you know, uh, role. But I, very sad, you know, it's a sad commentary because, you know, the FBI, I mean, they, Everybody in the world knows who the FBI is. I mean, yeah. in the world. Yeah, he damaged them quite a bit. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, let's see. Also from our text line, 478-8298, uh, Trump sheeple believe a compulsive liar who put an R next to his name recently over an honorable man like Comey, especially when Comey's October letter basically handed Trump the win. Sad. I thought the Russians handed Trump the win. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I, I'm confused now. I I thought it was the Russians that uh, beat Hillary, but apparently not. So well, remember they opened that investigation. Um, that the uh, and, and you, you know the, the the thing about it is it was a counterintelligence you know investigation, which being the president had, would have to approve it in October of 2016. Mm-hmm. You know, so in July he clears yeah. Hillary, and then in October he opens up a you know a, a counterintelligence investigation. On Trump and his campaign before the election, amazing! Mm-hmm. I mean, this yeah. is great. I mean, okay. this is this mm-hmm. is gonna write. This book is gonna be great a hundred years from now. Yeah, uh, from our text line four seven eight eight two nine eight. Uh, Shane is delusional. Trump called me to his office three times for meetings. <laughs> Call, called him to yeah. three times for meetings. Well, of course he did. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, back to local stuff. Uh, yes. We've got a uh, we've got another fire going in uh, Yellowstone. Uh, said in a news release Thursday that the Brimstone fire grew to about 80 acres on Wednesday night, making it the largest fire in the park so far this year. And uh, park staff are working to uh, reroute the uh, backpackers around the burning area. And uh, a park spokesman said the uh, fire staff and law enforcement were trying to contact 44 people and three stock parties uh, who uh, were scheduled to be in the area uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, They were also trying to contact people who were scheduled to be in the sites on Wednesday night. So two groups uh, have gotten shuttles out of the area by Thursday afternoon. So um, the release announced the closure of seven backcountry Campsite. So if you're familiar with uh, 5E1, 5E2, 5E3, 4, 5, 6, and 6B4, uh, and the uh, thoroughfare trail between campsite uh, 5E8 and Beaver Dam Creek. 
So if you're familiar with those areas, you want to avoid those if you can. So Very good, Eagle Man. And remember, the policy now in, in Yellowstone Park is let it burn. Let it burn, uh, yeah. I guess. I don't know what they're going to do, but uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, MSU uh, got a million bucks, uh, an innovative program at Montana State University that sports Montana students based on their effort and potential. That's pretty interesting, their effort and potential. Wow. You have to you have to actually do something in in college to <laughs> yeah, yeah wow <laughs> wow a million bucks for that <laughs> uh, will be sustained into the future with the help of a new one million dollar endowment university officials announced on Thursday and the endowment will support the uh, Hillerman Scholars uh, program uh, named after MSU uh, graduate and uh, vaccinologist Maurice Hillman we talked about that uh, not too long ago Shane he uh, vetted the uh, lot of uh, polio vaccine and a bunch of others uh, so uh, the funds are from Lorraine Hillman uh, Maurice Hillman's widow as well as from 11 additional individual donors and uh, from American Company, where Maurice Hillman spent the majority of his career. And uh, we're grateful uh, to this donation, of course, and uh, we hope that uh, that will bear out well on uh, those folks. Brilliant research, Maurice Ralph Hillman, 40 vaccines. Wow. Yeah, yeah he came and up with a yeah, lot of stuff. And, uh, and of the 14 vaccine vaccines routinely recommended, uh, you know, for ch- for children, he developed eight, including the big ones, measles and mumps. I mean, mm-hmm. wow, guys, mm-hmm. he was a rocket, baby. Yeah. Uh, let's see from our text line, 478-8298. Pretty sure Trump's investigation into the investigators will go the same way as his search for the millions of fraudulent votes nowhere. And I'll- well. First of all, it's not his investigation. It's uh, you know yeah. attorney generals, and like yeah. I said yesterday, Trump isn't investigating anybody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. So you know, yeah, you know, it, it, I mean, you know, if Trump had his choice, he'd shoot him on Fifth Avenue in New York, right? Well, yeah, <laughs> I'd, yeah, I'd got him down right there in the uh, middle of town. Yeah, and why not? Still get elected. <laughs> yeah, I still get elected. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, as I said, I think Hillary would have to shoot the Pope on the White House lawn to lose that election. But apparently the Pope's still in good health, so maybe she missed. <laughs> she, she just wounded him, maybe. I don't know. But I don't know. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not easy to fire a long, a long, a long gun, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that was her problem, probably. So, yeah. Well, uh, U.S. forest officials have uh, closed an area of the Gravely Range uh, due to the high concentration of grizzly bears roaming around. The closures are in the Lobo Mesa and uh, Teepee Creek areas, uh, about 50 miles south of Ennis. Uh, A a map of the exact closures uh, can be found at the Lobo Mesa trailhead, but it includes Forest Service trails 6405 and 6422. So if you're familiar with those, you need to stay out of that area. Uh, the uh, greater Yellowstone area is home to about 700 grizzly bears. So uh, uh, be careful out there. There is, uh, you know, there's bears. There's bears in the yeah. woods. And I just want to make this public service announcement, if I may. I did some reading about uh, algae blooms. 38 states now have this as an issue. Mm-hmm. And, uh, in, you know, the Department, uh, the Environmental Protection Agency is the cause. Are you ready for this? Plastic water bottles. So if you're out hiking, take them home, folks. Don't throw them in the river. Yeah, take them home with you. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back. News at the bottom of the hour. we got the county commissioners in at 8 o'clock, and we'll be right back after these important words, so stay tuned. 24 minutes for the top of the hour, Friday, August 30th, 2019, 55 degrees outside. Jamin Tobin, half man, half amazing in Vancouver, British Columbia. My co-host, Tommy Galoff, your morning mayor in the house, and uh, this is the KMMS Morning Soapbox with Tom and Shane. Uh, from our text line, 478-8298. Morning, Tom and Shane. What happened to Lady Law this morning? Well, Jennifer's going to take a little rest from the show for a while. She's, uh, her law practice is keeping her pretty busy and, uh, preparing for the show, um, uh, is a little uh, difficult sometimes. So she's going to take a little bit of a hiatus, but, uh, if there's something, uh, the Supreme Court does or something that happens in Montana, she's going to return and, uh, 
brief us on that. So for the time being, we're uh, probably going to replace her with the county commissioners if uh, they uh, consent to uh, coming in every week. So uh, and we'll have uh, Jennifer as uh, as uh, she feels that uh, there's uh, something that she wants to uh, talk about. Uh, let's see, Tom, you need to read the Mueller report and not depend on a Trump psychophant like like Shane, who worships Trump. <laughs> well, well, first of all, I admire him. I don't worship uh, yeah. only one person, my Lord, my God, my Savior. That's it. <laughs> um, how is it those leftist texters are blind to Comey's violation of FBI policy? And that's I, what they said I, that he did, so... Uh, let's see. What if I told you Trump is a corrupt man with over 12,000 documented lies and Comey is a principled, honest man tasked with investigating a dirty administration? Well, he didn't find anything, so I guess he he's a failure on two counts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, no, no one knows yeah. what the cost of the Hillary investigation was, yeah. but you know the the cost by the FBI of uh, the Russian investigation, $35 mm -hmm. million, dollars just for the FBI. That doesn't include the House committees and the Senate committees that investigated. Yeah. Uh, from our text line, 478-298, will Montana go red again in the next presidential election? Uh, what are y'all's thoughts on that? Well, um, I, there's a lot of... Uh, a lot going on. Uh, we've got uh, Gianforte. We've got Tim Fox. We've got several people that are, you know, that are running for governor. And I think that's what's going to, the governor's race is what's going to determine, I think. Uh, people get out uh, and vote for, um, you know, the Republican. Then I think we're going to remain a red state. We'll have some blue areas, obviously. We always do. And Gallatin County will probably be one of them. But, um I, I think for the most part, I think we probably will uh, retain a uh, Republican Congress and, and or a uh, Senate and House. Um, and, and, and it depends on how the, the election goes. If, if it becomes a swamp, you know, not mm -hmm. a swamp, but a landslide, then coattails of the president carries all, right? That's it. Yeah. Let's go to the phones. 522-TALK is the number. Call you on the air. What's going on? This is Clint. Hey, you're gonna, good morning, you're gonna, good sir. Sure, you don't want to hold your call till the commissioners are here because you can't double Boy, dip, I'll you know. Tell you, I'd have to. I'd probably go to jail. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll ask them the questions you need. You need answered, so we'll, we'll find out. Well, here it is. The big question with the commissioners: they never go out and look at any uh, anything before final plan yeah. approval. But anyway, here's something I want to say about Great West Engineering out of Helena. Mm -hmm. When me and Bob Siemens went into the county commissioner and met with uh, the commissioner, Mr. Skinner. They were, he, uh, Joe Skinner told me I couldn't talk. Mm. And Bob Siemens, he was there. He had to do the talking. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, me and Bill Black and some of us other farmers got together, and uh, we decided we needed a regional sewer plant. Great West Engineering said, well, you can't go down the highway. You can't go down the highway. You have to follow the river with your pipeline." Hmm. That's what they said. This is how stupid they are. And the reason I say they're stupid, I'll prove it right now. The Middle Creek comes out of the 500-year floodplain and drops to the 100-year floodplain. <laughs> and it runs right down through the heart of the 100-year floodplain, clear into the East Gallatin River. The Beckton Border Ditch heads just a little above me out of the river and comes out of the river right goes right through my place here and runs right down through the middle of the 100-year floodplain, pretty much follows the Jackrabbit Lane. Okay, water runs mm -hmm. downhill, Great West. I want to tell everybody this. And what this thing was all about was political. The city of Bozeman and the county would not come together, and Belgrade wouldn't come together to build a regional sewer plant at Belgrade. And that plant... I had the money, the grant, uh, grants administrators uh, or grant people from various parts of the state gathered the money to build this damn plant so it wouldn't have cost us anything for the city plant in Bozeman. And this is all facts I'm giving everybody. The political climate here in this valley is terrible. 
It is awful. It isn't about the people at all, I don't think, anymore. It's all about money and power. And that's what I got to say this morning. And I'm mad as hell, and I ain't going to take it anymore. All right. <laughs> you know, you. <laughs> and they're building a damn sewer plant right alongside of me. It's not 150 feet away from me. Yep. I'm going to lose my renters. Yep. Okay. Then what do I have to do? I have to go sue them, the sewer district, yeah. which I don't want to do. Okay, yeah. now what, what's that say to you? Jeff Krause told you the other day, he come and looked at it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm surrounded on three sides. You know, and I was here first. I've been, I've been here since in the, way, in, way into the 40s, for Christ's sakes. Yeah. And I wanted to say this about our political climate here. And another thing, you're talking about the grizzly bears up in Gravely Range? Mm-hmm. I hope they eat the environmentalists. I hope they go up there. <laughs> well, you know, let's hope they go look. <laughs> you know, I tell you, it's a grizzly bear is a terrible animal. He'll stalk you. Yes, he will. You know, and the thing is, and the environmental people talk about everything. It's they need to do this, but guess what? They're all moved out into the timber. Yeah, they're the, they never go out there. So that's right. That's and with me. I I don't go in the woods because there's bears in the woods. <laughs> well, mountain lions and snakes and all kinds of stuff. Why would you go in the woods? Well, I like well, and, and and they're indigenous to the prairies. They were driven out of the prairies. They, you know, yeah. it's just not yeah. really where they're supposed to be in the mountains. But. Yeah, yeah. Well, the girl from uh, you heard about the wolf trying to eat the guy there at one of the campgrounds here in mm -hmm. Montana, didn't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, the girl there at the TV station in Missoula, she reported it. Yeah. And uh, so the wolves are out there, and if you go in the woods, you better take a gun with you. Yeah. That's all I can That's say. That's for sure. You know? <laughs> but I'm really disgusted. Yeah. These county, these two county, the new county commissioners are seem to be okay. I haven't talked to this Scott McFarland, but mm -hmm. I've talked to Don Seifert, and them two are really good. And 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 Mr. Mm -hmm. Skinner, I, him and I uh, are going to have words one of these days. Okay. Well, and uh, I don't know if he'll be in this morning or not. Well, I, I know Scott's coming, but I don't know if uh, the other two are going to show up or not. So. Well, I know this here yeah. for sure. Yeah. Any time we've elected these county commissioners, mm -hmm. and before they or the health department or, or or the planning boards approve these subdivisions, I want them to go out and check it and see the subdivision if it's going to hurt anybody else around them. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Oh, yeah. Okay, and they're not doing that. No, they're not. They well, I, I don't think the city does either. I think no, they, they just, they just they look at the plans and say, okay, it's a good idea or it's not. And who's running the show? The engineering firms, aren't they? Well, the county just turned one down uh, that was too close to the river or something like that, some development. they We reported on it the other day. I don't know if maybe that was in Livingston, but... Uh, well, you know why the county, uh, why they turn away mm -hmm. from the river? Yep. Federal law prohibits it. Mm -hmm. Well, they were, supposed, they, they were supposedly uh, whatever the distance is and above... above I think it's the, 300 uh, feet. Uh, yeah, it's above the... Uh, the high water mark, uh, they were above that, so uh, but they still got to gotta know. I got to go, Cliff. Okay, Sorry, well, I just I... wanted to say that this morning when the commissioners come in. And if you folks mm -hmm. out there in Bozeman vote for that law and justice center, <laughs> I, you better not. You're going to force you eventually <laughs> out of this country, and the richest are you going to stuff the ballot? Are you going to stuff the ballot box? What, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, come on. Well, <laughs> the, uh, this last deal here, you know, another forty dollars a year on a two hundred. I know. I, you know, I mean, God, Tom, <laughs> it, what's going on I'm, here? I'm pizzaed out. Uh, well, you're, <laughs> we're, uh, people are getting tapped out. They're having to sell out and leave. <laughs> Gotta go. Hey, thanks for the call. You bet your bye. Right, take care. All right, we'll be right back. Thirteen minutes for the top of the hour. It's Friday, August thirtieth, twenty nineteen. Fifty six degrees outside. Uh, the county commissioners will join us at eight o'clock. Uh, coming up, and uh, from our text line, uh, really active uh, today, Jane. So, yeah, yeah. Four seven eight eight two nine eight is the number. Four zero six. If you're outside of our immediate listening area, you want to text us? Four zero six four seven eight eight two nine eight. Uh, I agree with Clint. These politicians in the Valley are not for the welfare of the people. 
Uh, again, uh, after no proof against Roy Moore, the Kavanaugh hearing debacle, the lies and fabrication of the Steele dossier, the uh, Hillary's tampering with evidence and emails, and on and on and on. Where does it all end? If Comey walks too, I'm concerned that we've already lost the republic. It's gone too far. Thanks, Steve-O, for that. Uh, how can we get Clint on the payroll at KMMS Morning Soapbox? He's a legend. Well, right now I got him working for free, like Shane. So I've got to keep a, <laughs> got to keep the payroll down. So <laughs> Clint's welcome here daily <laughs> as needed. So uh, you really need to read the Mueller report. He found much corruption, and Russians did a lot to help Trump. Well. Hillary got 3 million more votes than Trump did, so I don't know how the Russians made a big deal or made a difference in the election, if that's the case. And uh, I, I've asked the very same question since the day after the election. If, if the Russians know more about the counties in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and uh, you know, Wisconsin than the pros do, then we're, we need to we need to start hiring Boris and Natasha uh, to do the next, uh, you know, do our next election. So let's take a phone call. 522-TALK is the number. Call you on the air. What's up? Uh, yeah, this is Steve. I'm over in, uh, in this area. Yeah. Uh, is, is anybody reported the, the technical issue you guys have with your Internet? Steve? Yes. Yeah, we yeah, it's skipping and uh, we're having the same uh, problem over at XL Country. And uh, okay. we're trying to find the problem with it. I apologize, but uh, they're they're working on trying to figure out what's going on with it. But, uh, yeah, it's been uh, three or four or five days it's been going on. Uh, it's been going on a lot longer than that. But well, it, it probably is. And then it replays the feed sometimes mm-hmm. two to three times. And, right. Yeah, that's, and, that's the complaint uh, we've been getting. I apologize for that. Yeah. Okay. Just want to know. Yeah. I, I, they're working on it, I'm sure. So. <laughs> okay. Great. All right, all right. Thanks a lot. Yeah, it's one of those uh, skippy things that come up every once in a while when you deal with electronics and all this stuff that we have to do here. All right, we got to take another quick break here. We went a little long on uh, Clint's call, but we'll be right back right after this. Seven and a half minutes for the top of the hour. It's Friday, August 30th, 2019, 56 degrees outside. Looking for a high of the mid to upper 80s. Shane Tobin on the line with me from uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. I had to think about where you where you were up there, but uh, I know you're up there somewhere. You're in, somewhere. Wit- well, the uh, great white north, yes. The witness protection keeps moving you around, so I... I never can't keep track of where you are. So, uh, Tommy, go off your morning mayor in the house. And this is the KMS Morning Soapbox with Tom and Shane. Uh, we're expecting uh, county commissioners in here shortly uh, to talk to us about all kinds of things. Uh, let's see from our text line. Boris and Natasha, blast from the past. Now, that was a good joke, Tom. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Boris and Natasha with the... Uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle and all the all the folks over there. So uh, uh, let's see. Um, the Mueller report clearly showed Russian interference in social media and Facebook ads. If you don't think minds can be manipulated, why did politicians spend a billion on TV ads? It's not to change votes. It's not. The Russians didn't convince Hillary voters to go in and vote for Trump. That just isn't how it works. The the idea is that you get your opponent to waste votes, and that's exactly what they did with Hillary. They got her to waste votes in areas that she would have won anyway. But if you think the people in Pennsylvania were manipulated into, oh, I'm, I'm off Hillary and I'm on Trump by some Facebook ad, uh, you need help. <laughs> You're off your meds, I think. So you don't change somebody's... You, you don't change a Democrat to a Republican with a Facebook ad. Well, that's right. And, and, I mean, that, you just know, that just doesn't happen. Your, your media made that clear with what they've done for the last two years to try to take your president down. So, yeah. you know, anyway. I yeah. um, just want to mention the market real quick because oh, it's yeah, important. Go for because it. We talked about it earlier. The Chinese mm-hmm. have now moved into Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. This is the other leg of the black swan I talked about. And uh, we're concerned about it. Yes, the market's up. The Dow's up 110. So is the S&P and the Nasdaq. Um, but the, the real the real issue here now is currency. And the currency traders have, uh, 
increased or devalued the uh, won again. It's at 7.15 to the U.S. dollar. And uh, the government bonds are, are showing a tick up or, or a, a small tick up, um, which means buying is flat um, of the U.S. Uh, debt. Uh, the, the, the commodities market, you know, it, it shows gold's uh, up marginally at 15.27, but silver's up 18.39. And my $20,000 investment, which bought me 1,270 ounces of silver, is up uh, $3,000 in the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the thing I want to mention about this, folks, is as I said to you, this, this was a, uh, a market sell-off and uh, you know, could lead to a continuing sell-off, particularly what happens in Hong Kong. If it gets nasty there, uh, all bets are off on a trade deal. Um, the world is, a, is in a real pickle with Brexit. And, uh, of course, these other uh, expected uh, investig investigations to be reported regarding the, the U.S. government. So uh, it's uh, time to talk to your broker about uh, whatever you think uh, you should in, uh, you know, being in a defensive mood. You want to, you know, make sure you're ready, willing, and your powder's dry because it's going to be a rocky road between now and the Chinese trade deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if there is one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that'll be the thing, so. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, from our text line, using every skill I had learned during my decades as a Marine, I did as well as I could for as long as I could with my concrete solutions and strategic advice, especially keeping faith with our allies, no longer resonated. It was time to resign despite the limitless joy I felt serving alongside the troops in defense of the Constitution. That's General James Mattis. And uh, the Mueller report clearly showed Russian interference in social media and ad book or ad, ads. We read that one already. Uh, let's see. Remember when Obama said the media works for him and need to support him better? Oh, that was Trump at Fox News. Well, that's right. And uh, Fox News, I don't think, uh, uh, you know, if you discount, uh, you know, Tucker Carlson and uh, Hannity and um, Ingram and all of those, uh, those folks aren't reporters. You know, they're commentators, which is what Shane and I are. Uh, the reporters, Shepard Smith and uh, Brett Baer and some of the others, uh, certainly uh, have given Trump all he needs. They have certainly haven't been carrying the water for him if you've ever watched them. So by all means, uh, you know, check out the reporters rather than the commentators Mm -hmm. And I think you'll see a much different story at Fox. And um, I can see where the president is is upset with them because they are telling the uh, truth the way they see it. And um, if that falls negatively on him, then uh, there we are. So uh, much the news. But yeah. The, the point the point is they are reporting the news, which the other networks aren't. So. Well, that's true. Yeah. Uh, Democrats and Republicans vote the party line ads, especially at attack ads, influence independent voters. Uh, Russian ads attacked Hillary and Hillary's campaign was incompetent. Trump didn't win as much as she lost. Dem stayed home. Well, I think a lot of Democrats did stay home because they thought she would win in a landslide. Well, and Trump did get 51% of the women's vote. He got a higher percentage of the African-American vote than anyone ever yeah. has. Yeah. And he got a much higher percentage of the Mexican-American vote than anyone expected as well. So, uh, mm -hmm. again, if, if the economy improves and strengthens, I think both those numbers are going to increase. I think he'll go over 10% with the African-American vote. And I think he'll get 35% of the Mexican-American vote. And I think women will come back and, and vote for him. Particularly, you know, if, if all mm -hmm. those women... Congress women in Republican right or uh, districts got that got elected mm -hmm. uh, vote for impeachment, w which is, will go nowhere. Yeah, they're, they're doomed. They, they won't get mm -hmm. elected. No, they won't. All right. Uh, that does it for this segment. Uh, we're expecting the county commissioners in here the next hour. So uh, we will chat with them and um, stay tuned. We have a lot more to do and uh, we'll be back with more right after the news at the bottom of the hour. Don't forget our app, AM 1450 KMMS. You need to have that app because next week we're going to give away some football tickets and you'll need the app to win them. Now, you'll also be able to call in. Uh, if you don't have a smartphone, don't worry about it. But if you do have a smartphone, get the app, and uh, you'll be entered in the uh, for the tickets. So uh, we'll talk about that more on Tuesday when we give them away. We'll be right back. 
Good morning, everyone. It is uh, six minutes after the hour of 8 o'clock, Friday, August 30th, 2019. 56 degrees outside, looking for a high in the mid-80s. Shima Tobin, half man, half amazing. My co-host in Vancouver, British Columbia on the line. And uh, Tommy Galuff, your unelected morning mayor in the house. Uh, <laughs> and we've got the... As I told them, they can run, but they can't hide. We've got the county commissioners back in the hot seat again. How you doing, guys? Good morning, Tom. Good. We're doing great. Right. Doing great. Don Seifert, uh, uh, Joe Skinner, and Scott McFar- McFarland are here. Scott being the new uh, new kid on the block, I guess. So welcome, Scott. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Had to, glad to have you here. And, uh, well, we wanted to talk about, obviously, the Law and Justice Center mm-hmm. is rearing its ugly head again. Yeah. <laughs> and... And uh, as I told Scott when I talked to him, uh, uh, you, you guys need a new name. Uh, the, the Tom and Shane Center uh, yeah. would, would be a shoe in vote, uh, you know. Don, Don's been talking about a new name for yeah. several months now. We've well, come up with a few, but they might not be appropriate. Uh, yeah. Well, that's, that's true. Well, the voters, don't, I think, uh, after uh, how, many, how many votes have we had on this thing? Three or four at Actually, least? Actually, only... I think only one vote. Only one, only one for for a county facility. Yeah. Really? Well, we had a, a vote for, for we had a vote for where there was two uh, choices of where it was going to be, years ago. Well, yeah. We that, that was more for the jail. Oh well, I guess that's true. Yeah, because yeah. you were combined then. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I thought we had another one at least. Well, where the you city were had a vote. Again. The yeah. city had a vote on their lawn justice center, right. which failed. Yeah. And then the city and county had a vote together. Yeah, which that, failed. That failed, <laughs> and then the city went out on their own, and yeah. they passed there. So, yeah. so this is actually our second try for yeah. a county facility. Okay, um, one of the things that listeners have commented on with all the people moving out of the, you know, the police didn't take up that much room, but the courts mm-hmm. did. Uh, would there not be enough room for you guys if all those things moved out? I. You know, that's that's a facility that we did a needs assessment on, what, 10 years ago, something like that. And uh, there's just not enough room uh, in there mm-hmm. to, to do everything we need. Uh, we're, we're cramped in there so much now that even if the city, even when the city moves out, mm-hmm. there's not enough room and the ability to, to remodel that is really limited. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, you got an older building versus putting up something that will not only serve us now, but in the future. There, there might be enough space in there right now for a, a year or two, but the the issue is as soon as we try to make a court in there, it triggers the code issue, mm-hmm. and to remodel that building and to add the uh, the extra room that we need, you yeah. know, for the future, it, we're talking like thirty five million dollars. Yeah, yeah. So, um, we we did some remodeling on it years back. We drove some piles there, or something around it, or whatever you guys were doing. I that think. was when we built the jail. Yeah, yeah. Okay. actually, and yeah. and since we built the jail there, that's kind of the anchor. You know, we pretty much have to build the Lawn Justice Center mm-hmm. there. Yeah. I've I've talked to people on the phone that says, well, why don't you go to the old Kmart site or the Gibson site or, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we're pretty much tied to that that place now since well the, with the jail the there, there i think yeah you're you're you sort of are yeah i think well we transport a lot of prisoners back and forth right and uh you know it just works better more efficiently to have your your courts next to the, where the the jail is mm-hmm. yeah and that's been part of the master plan for that uh, that property for, for 30 years mm-hmm. uh, since that place was built yeah well, I remember when it was, you know, torn almost fully apart because I lived about a half a block away. We used to walk the dogs over there on that open space yeah. where the old detention center was. So, yeah, yeah. So I was pretty familiar the, with The county the bought center. that facility. It was an old Catholic high school. We, yeah. we bought it in 1979, and then it had a fire in the early 90s. Early 90s, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's when the city came in and helped us remodel it. Yeah. And then they took some space there. Yeah, because I remember the whole side of it was gone at one point. Yeah. The you know you could look right into the open, big yeah. openings there, yeah. so it was quite a, quite a thing. So it's sort of uh, the interesting yeah. thing is in in 1980, just right after that was bought, mm-hmm. the, the population of the county was 43,000 people was all there was here. Yeah, and and now we're pushing 112,000 and trying to use the same facility. Mm-hmm. It's just not working. Yeah. Um, what uh, what's different from now from when you did this before uh is it save money more money probably more money it's, because of the inflation and whatever but 
It's more money. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And, and, and we did the same thing with the jail. Cost you know? of construction has gone up, but I think sure. I think what people are really seeing is quite a bit more money is when we were with the city, we said, you know, we had like 30% savings because we had common open space mm-hmm. and just the savings from doing it together. And now the city's went out on their own and yeah. we're doing our own. Mm-hmm. So you're losing that that shared I was going to say uh, it's probably going to cause us more for two buildings than it would be for one but yeah you know, and, but that's neither here nor there yeah, it was voted in and it's done so now the you know you guys are on the hot seat again to right. to do this thing uh, by yourselves and one, and one of the big things that's different too is is there's five courtrooms in this facility that we've mm-hmm. got planned now and the previous one with the uh, with the uh, city there was only four yeah so uh, well, the legislature one, turned down another judge for us, did they not? By this one past vote, time around, yeah, yeah, one, one vote. vote, yeah. So eventually, we're you're going to have another courtroom in here sooner or later. They've actually done some some I studies, think. and we're actually two point three, two point six judges down. Okay, yeah, yeah. I was going to say you'd have at least one more, if not two. Yeah, so. and and there's plans uh, as this building would would grow that we wouldn't necessarily have to add another courtroom, but we can go to scheduling courtrooms and and that type of thing to get some. Mm-hmm. We think that five courtrooms uh, uh, will get us at least twenty to thirty years down the road. Yeah, I would, I would hope so. <laughs> yeah, to me, to me, yeah. that's one of the biggest reasons for mm-hmm. building a building is yeah. the the courts. You know, we it's the courts, district courts are a, a state function, but we have to supply the space, mm-hmm. and we really won't get more judges until we have a place to put them. So you got a place to put them. Yeah. You know, yeah. so mm-hmm. so what are, where do we do that? You know. Do we make another shed of justice out in front or two or yeah. three little buildings? You, you know, put I don't them in think. in a tent up, yeah. up beside there, you know. I, I don't think that's what the <laughs> people either. really want to do. You don't think do. they want that? And, no. and so <laughs> what do we not. do? We can't really rent, yeah. you can't really rent space for a courtroom. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just really now's the time to yeah. do it. I yeah. think it's uh, uh, the needs there. We need the judges desperately. They're, you know, their yeah. workload is over the top yeah. and. And, uh, and you know when justice we, is slowing down because of it. Sure. Yeah. And when when we talk about courts, we sort of naturally grow go to the criminal side of it. But the reality is, the the criminal side is moving along, albeit slow, but it is moving. It's the civil side. You know those uh, uh, those uh, civil court mm-hmm. issues that that begin to move to the bottom of the stack and really begin to to stretch out and and uh, uh, are delayed. And uh, th- that's not fair to to those folks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the um, getting back to, I, I guess, the, the name of this thing, because when you, uh, it's the Law and Justice Center again, I think voters say, OK, uh, the knee jerk reaction is to vote this thing down. Sure. You know, I mean, that's just, yeah. you know, it, it, unfortunately, uh, and we did the same with the jail. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, we well, it took three times, I think, to get the jail done. Right. Yeah. And this will be the second or third time for the Law and Justice Center. and we're yeah. we're open if somebody yeah. has got a better name for the law and justice center. We're yeah. we're open to it. And we as much as we might, as much as we might try to rebrand it, I don't think that we can in people's minds. Even if we even if we try yeah. to pull that, well, you over, still know what it is. Yeah, people yeah. are still going to refer to it. As, yeah, it's still going to be the LJ, yeah. no matter what. Yeah. Cops and courts, right? That's what <laughs> yeah. it is. Well, the other thing too is that the the city kind of reneged on you a little bit by throwing that two hundred dollar uh, t- property tax thing in there that they were going to let you go your way on your ballot and they were going to go their way on their ballot, mm-hmm. but now they've kind of stuffed that extra. Uh, pizza a month in there for <laughs> <laughs> that it always boils down to it's pizza always a pizza coffee, a month right? a pizza or a latte <laughs> our new a new currency right right yeah, yeah. so new currencies are pizzas and lattes so <laughs> uh let's take a phone call see what the listeners got on their minds 522 talk is the number 522-8255 caller you on the air with the uh, commissioners what's up uh, we to raise my blood pressure on a Friday morning. Yeah. I thought we'd call it the Never Enough Center because no matter what you all get, it's never enough. <laughs> all right. Well, I guess that's it. So there you are. It's never enough. Never well, enough. Well, I don't think we're looking for it for us. It, it yeah. really doesn't affect the county commissioners yeah. that much. But we're say. looking for it for mm-hmm. the good of the people in the future now and in the future. Yeah, I yeah. mean, mm-hmm. it's not going away. It's a need. and Yeah. Um, yeah. I think we've got a really good plan here. You know, I'll trust the voters, whatever they think. But mm-hmm. uh, Don has a new saying. Yeah. That, 
if if not now, when? Yeah, it, it's a problem that's not going away. Well, that's what we said about the jail. You right. know, if if yeah. we don't do it now, when are we going to do it? And it yeah. took three times before people yeah. realized that you know we got to do this because you if, know if this one fails, it's going to be well. It'll, it'll even be if it passes, money. it's going to be, be three years before we move into it. Yeah, it'll be critical it, then. Yeah. If it yeah. fails, it'll be another two or three years, then another three years of construction. Mm-hmm. You're looking six more years. And yeah. You know, what yeah. are construction prices going to be then? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Well, as I said, we went through this with the jail. We had all these consultants come in, and, you know, uh, people got a bad taste in their mouth about that. But I, I think they realize the need for a jail. I'm not sure they realize the need for courts as because that doesn't um, – you know, crime affects you, obviously. Right. Uh, right. Court things, you know, unless they're TV type things, are pretty boring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for the most part. Yeah, sure. we've we've struggled with that. I mean, mm-hmm. it's it's a hard sell because yeah, a lot of people aren't in that building a lot, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, and so it's the, uh, um, but but there it will affect people. There's yeah, a lot sure. of way. There's mm-hmm. just tremendous reasons people are in that building. Yeah, whether it's to get uh, concealed weapons permit. Mm-hmm. you know divorces just all mm-hmm. kinds of uh and um, and sure. yeah and that's one of the problems with that building is uh everything happens in the in the hallways right and so mm-hmm. you've got defendants you've got victims you've got you've got witnesses you've got jurors you've got the you know the general public all passing in the hallways and and yes we do have security there so there are no weapons in there but there's a lot of bad things that can happen with words sure Absolutely. Let's take another call, and then we got to take a break. Caller, we'll be right back. Or call you on the air, and then we'll be right back. What's up? Hello. Is that me? That's you. Okay. Well, I uh, your telephone system is rather peculiar. So, yeah, I know that. Yeah. It okay. Is. Uh, okay. I keep hearing a lot of contradictions here. One word for one, they're saying that we need to have the jail next to the courthouse so that we can. Move the path, move the uh, the you know, move the 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 accused into the courtroom, and then we're hearing that the power shortage is not in the in the criminal court; it's in the in the in the uh, it's in the civil court. Okay, uh, are we going to start putting uh, civilian complainants in the jail too? No, uh, I, I think what it really is is that uh, uh, both of them are are that that judge. Uh, Usage is, is deficient in, in both the civil and the criminal. The criminal, of oh. course, are in, in custody, and they need to be moved from, from the detention center into the courthouse. So uh, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's okay, an important Okay, well, thing. If you, security is not very important in a civil courtroom. It's a civil courtroom. It's a meeting of civil people. And if you have a problem with a shortage of civil courtrooms, all you have to do is start using the probably empty convention space that you have in the town and schedule it accordingly, and then you have your civil court proceedings in a room where they can do that. I, I think so our sheriff I think our, to do that. I think our sheriff would disagree with that. They say that the sheriff will disagree with anything that doesn't make him a feel, give him an ability to build a bigger pallet <laughs> with himself. All right. Hey, thanks for the call. We've got to take a break. We'll be right back right after this. So stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone. It's 20 minutes after the hour. It's Friday, August 30th, 2019. We're talking with the uh, county commissioners. We've got Don Seifert here. we got uh, Joe Skinner and uh, Scott McFarland. And uh, uh, one of the things, uh, Joe, the caller just mentioned about uh, being somewhere else uh, for civil uh, things, and you wanted to make a comment on that that we ran out of time right. for. So if you'll repeat that. Uh, well, I've just heard the sheriff say that it's really the uh... – Things that happen in civil court, the divorces, child custody, um, things like that, adoptions, you know, that's where the volatile things happen. Mm-hmm. That's where, where emotions are heated. high, yeah. tempers are heated, and that's mm-hmm. really even more so than the criminal cases is where something bad could happen. Yeah, because usually the in a criminal case, the person, if they need to be restrained, are. Yeah, and there's yeah. usually uh, a bailiff there yeah, and, a, and, and yeah, an and officer. Got, and, yeah, you got some... Security yeah, there, so that's that's probably the most em- emotional building in the, in the whole county is mm-hmm. because of all the like uh, like uh, Commissioner Skinner said, you know, divorces, child custody, you know, indigent kids, all of that is happening in that building, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a pretty emotional building. Yeah, 
uh, from our text line, 478-8298, to the commissioners, uh, how about cutting the rate of city-county government so people can afford to live here? That's from Bob. So I don't, I'm not sure how you're going to cut too much. But, uh, what, what, would you, <laughs> what would you like us to cut? Uh, yeah, well, what, that's what, always the yeah. question. What do you want to – yeah, whose ox do you want gored yeah. Yeah. is uh, what always comes up. And um, yeah. You know, it's interesting to me, and, and I, I might look at it a little differently because I've been doing this a long time, but mm-hmm. um, we've actually not raised our millage to the maximum for like 10 years. Mm-hmm. We've not maximized our millage in the county, which – Almost every jurisdiction, county jurisdiction in the state does. They have a certain formula that they can maximize their millage every year, and mm-hmm. they do. We haven't done that for like 10 years. We haven't max. We might have yet last year. Yeah. But for 10 or 15 years, we haven't. We've, we've got like 2 or $3 million that we could tax that we don't. Right. And it, it's interesting to me that all of a sudden we did maximize our millage this year and raise taxes with some of that available money. Mm-hmm. because of some really inflationary issues that we had to take care of and the rest home. Mm-hmm. And it makes front page news that we raise taxes. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's tough for me to see that Yeah, because people haven't seen the 10 or 15 years that really uh, most people's county mm-hmm. taxes, not school or city or rural fire districts or RIDs, mm-hmm. their county taxes, what we have control of as county commissioners have actually gone down over the last few years. Okay. And there's a, there's a bit of an issue there, too, in, in Commissioner McFarland, Commissioner Skinner. have heard me rail about this just a little bit. So generally speaking, the state runs on, on income tax. Counties and municipalities run on property tax. Right. And there has, quite honestly, there has been a failure in Helena, and I don't care if you blame the legislature, the governor, the Republicans, the Democrats. There's plenty of blame to go around. Um, they have cut some very important programs and have asked the counties to pick that up. So uh, basically what they have done is they have, have uh, by refusing to raise income tax, uh, which covers everybody in the state of Montana and corporation that makes, makes uh, an income, they have, they have brought that down to the property tax owners. And, and so now the property tax owners, just the people that own property. So there's been Quite honestly, in my opinion, there's been an inequity, and in, in the the state of Montana has not done their job. This well, is... we we all got sticker shock from our property tax bills or assessments sure. this time around. You sure, know, no 30, doubt, thirty percent or something like no that, doubt. and everybody's going, "Whoa, what's going on I, here?" I think it's interesting yeah. if if you look at the way that taxes are are, are allocated around the counties. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's always hard because you you write your check to the Gallatin County Treasurer and everybody assumes that all those dollars are are going to the county. The the reality is countywide, um, there's only 18 percent of those dollars that are going to the county. That means for every thousand dollars in property tax, uh, the county uh, receives 180. Sort of two thousand dollars is kind of a standard property tax bill. That's 360 dollars. Um, that the county uses to supply all of the services that we that mm. we provide. So it's it's uh, it's by comparison, uh, um, um, schools are sixty two percent of that. Mm-hmm. Um, so schools are taking a lot. To, uh, total for all the cities is is sixteen percent. So well, um, the other thing too is you guys subsidize other counties, um, the lower lower we're, income counties. We're, we're a donor. To, we're a donor. We're a donor. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, sure. to, to some extent. Sure. I mean, yeah. you look at... Uh, a lot always, of our taxes go to the state, and then the state redistributes them. Yeah, they, go, they send some it, back. They we don't send get as much to, back as yeah, we send right. up there. Yeah. You know, you look at Petroleum County up in mm-hmm. Winnett, uh, um, there's 500 people in a whole county up yeah. there. So you got to uh, have a sheriff. you got to have a... <laughs> you, right. you got to have a court. you got to have something there. When people talk about sales tax, replacing property tax, for example, You've got three businesses in in Winnet, three businesses in the whole county that can collect mm-hmm. sales tax. They collect so, sales tax. So you're, yeah. there's no way you're going to generate in in Petroleum County enough enough mm-hmm. dollars to op, to offset any any uh, uh, property tax. Mm-hmm. So yeah. uh, it's a complex issue. And, yeah, and, it really is. And uh, the distribution of mm-hmm. that, sharing some of that load with some of the counties that we call that we donate to, or that we you know, we're a donor county to. None of us stay in our county, right? We, mm-hmm. We like the freedom to be able to run over to some of those less populated counties. Sure. And we still have an expectation yep. that there's going to be services in those counties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not mm-hmm. everything that we do is stays in Gallatin County. Right? Sure. Yeah. So. And, and you know, I, I think we all love Montana. We all love Gallatin County. Um, mm-hmm. and, and it just, um, there's just, mm-hmm. Gallatin County is very fortunate. Yeah. And uh, 
we have to, I always call it, know our place in the band. Right. Uh, have and, I, we, and I wouldn't say that's a, a significant, I wouldn't blame your property taxes on that. Mm, no. You yeah. know, on, on that we're subsidizing other counties. There's yeah, there's a, little a, few, bit of that, but there's a few small programs we participate in where, where we try to allocate how much each county pays. And if you really wanted mm -hmm. to dig down to every penny, you'd find that we disproportionately mm -hmm. pay a little bit more. But it, as a total of our budget, that's a very small amount of money. That yeah. That all happens. That all happens. All that magic happens up in Helena. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is the rest home going to be uh, solvable or, or salvageable now? Um, I think the only, this is, Personally speaking, I think the only way the rest homes are going to be salvageable is if the people choose to, to subsidize it with their with taxes. Yeah. So you know where we've got a interim plan in place for a couple of years that we can keep it mm -hmm. going, but I think I think we're going to have to put it to a vote for a mill levy. And ultimately, what happened there was uh, um, the uh, Medicaid reimbursement rate. The state cut mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And so it costs uh, about two hundred and eighty. Five dollars a day, something like that, to, uh, for a Medicaid patient in the rest home, um, and and they're uh, reimbursed. Uh, the rest home is reimbursed at about two hundred and eight, something like that. Mm -hmm. So so we're losing you know, fifty dollars plus a day per Medicaid patient in there, and, and so that's what we're making up. Yeah, okay. hard hard to run a business like that. Well, it is, no question about that. So <laughs> I don't know. It's, well, you guys have a lot of challenges, obviously, and uh, that's why we like to have you in here because, um, yeah, you know, it's not not everything is favorable with <laughs> listeners, but uh, you know, we appreciate you guys doing the job and uh, being being out there, and uh, we hope you'll come back and visit with us on a regular basis. And we uh, love to. Yeah. Well, let's hope so. So okay. I think it's uh, I I think uh, the folks have missed you. And uh, even though they don't always <laughs> agree with what you say, we need to say it. Yeah, that's right. right. So, well, <laughs> it's a good opportunity for us to let people know what we're doing. Well, that's yeah. true too. And uh, you know, if you don't hear all sides, uh, then mm -hmm. you know we're we're not doing our job. I think is uh, you know our job and your job is to get sure. the information out to everybody. And, yeah, we don't tell our story well sometimes. So yeah, well, uh, I, we're working on it. I don't either. But uh, <laughs> so anyway, all right. Uh, thanks, guys. Don Seifert, uh, Joe uh, Skinner, and. Scott McFarland, we appreciate you guys coming in. Hopefully, we'll see you uh, on a regular basis All right, here. Thanks, All right. Tom. Yeah, All thank right. you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks All for right. being in the house, guys. <laughs> All right. We'll be back right after this. 23 minutes for the top of the hour. It's Friday, August 30th, 2019. Uh, thanks to the commissioners for uh, coming in and spending a little time with us. And uh, Shane's been interrogating a caller on the line, so let's go to the phones. 522-TALK is uh, the number. Caller, you're on the air. What's going on? Um, well, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Man. I, I can't hear him either. I kept telling him to speak up, but I can't hear him. You know what I like the most about listening to KMMF on the web? Okay, we're going to have to get a better connection. I'm sorry, Vinny. Uh, we couldn't understand anything you were saying. So uh, if you get to a better place in the or someplace where you got a better, a stronger signal, uh, we'll uh, get you back on. <laughs> so I, ha I have a suggested name change. Yeah? I'd call it the Mansfield Courthouse. The Mansfield Courthouse. Well, it's not a courthouse per se, but that's oh, okay. okay. Uh, how, about the, how about the Mansfield Center? Yeah, 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 Mansfield something Law like that. Center, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, we can name it after uh, Mike Mansfield, uh, Speaker of the House way back when. Yeah, Great American, Montana. He was a Democrat, but uh, okay, who's counting? That's it. <laughs> I like he, that. Was a war, he was a war hero. Yeah. He was a mm -hmm. senior whip. He was uh, then yeah. the majority leader for 15 mm -hmm. years, longest serving uh, ambassador to Japan. Yeah. Great, great American. Yeah. Uh, from our text line, 478-8298, property taxes pushing lifelong residents out of their homes in retirement, uh, eliminate primary uh, home property taxes, and add a sales tax. So, There you go. Uh, why is it so expensive? If the Element Hotel costs 10 to $15 million to build, why can't the Law and Justice Center be built much cheaper uh, than uh, what you're asking. I guess it depends on the design or what you have to have in there. Uh, uh, I don't know uh, what all you uh, have to have in a in a law and justice center. <laughs> so, 
Well, my, my, my call would be one word, government. Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah, government always <laughs> costs more than. <laughs> that's why uh, that's why government doesn't build buildings downtown, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, uh, they don't buy they don't buy anything from IKEA, you know, for the courtrooms. It's yeah. all nice, you know, redwood and paneling, you know, like. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, also, from our text line, we were talking about Fox News a little bit. Fox News and uh, Fox News news are legit. Uh, tr- uh, Trumpsters hate Smith, Wallace, Cavuto because they expose Trump's lies and incompetency. The primetime uh, Trump uh, sycophant pundits are embarrassing, uh, but they earn Fox billions of dollars. Well, that's true. So does Rachel Maddow, and so does uh, Chris Matthews, and so does. Uh, uh, What's his name? Uh, Cu- uh, Kumo. Don Lamon. Kumo. Don Lamont. Don Lamont. <laughs> Let's take a phone call. 522 Talk is the number. 522 8255. Call you on the morning soapbox with Tom and Shane. What's up? So, when a citizen gets arrested and goes to court, they're guaranteed a trial. What's the word? What's the adjective for that trial? Uh, kangaroo? No, what's the adjective before the word trial? You're guaranteed a, a fair trial. trial. No, no, <laughs> no, it's not fair. It's, it's an adjective to describe the length of the trial or when you might get it. Oh, a uh, a, a swift trial. A speedy trial. <laughs> speedy sir. trial, yeah, that's right. What's the average number of days that one of our citizens, who may or may not be a Gallatin County resident, gets arrested and spends in there before their said trial? Well, Once it's again, a while. It's a while, I know. Yeah. The problems in this country have a root. Like every tree or plant on the planet, they have a root. Mm-hmm. And the root is the court system. There is not a single person who goes in there and gets a speedy trial. How many days do, do they spend in prison? How much are we spending on those citizens who are not getting their rights served to them for a speedy trial? They had all their rights taken away when they were arrested. They are not mm-hmm. given the rest of their rights after that. All that money that we spend housing this scum, these freaking meth addicts, these thieves, these people that walk into a business like mine and steal mm-hmm. a log splitter so they can get their freaking drug money. We do not spend the money wisely. We no, do we not don't. Run no, the, we don't. You're right. We do not run the county or the city like a business, the way Trump is trying to run this country and the way we're getting improvements from it. When we have more citizens coming into this county, more tax bases coming in. If they need more money for more projects, that money should be coming from those citizens. If not, you're attracting the wrong type of citizen. You're attracting citizens who are costing a burden on this community. They waste the money they get. When I called in earlier and said it's the Never Enough Center and hung up, it's because I knew they would just giggle and laugh the same way Jeff Krause does when you confront them with facts. They are irresponsible. They are gluttons. They are greedy. And it is a sickness. They need freaking help and they need to be stopped. All that money that we waste could be paying for this law and justice center over the last 10 years. They are despicable. They are a waste. It's sad, sad crap. I got to go to work. All right. Hey, thanks for the call. All right. Uh, yeah, the caller is correct. Uh, uh, there's a, a story of a Bozeman uh, man sentenced to drug treatment for a 200, uh, 2018 robbery. Uh, he was given credit for 254 days in the Gallatin County Jail. So uh, that's almost a year, Shane. And uh, his accomplice uh, was uh, in there 224 days before she uh, appeared in court. So that's... That's what we're looking at, and the caller's not wrong on uh, on uh, that part of his uh, comment, at least. So, well, ninety percent of the people in in your justice system are bonded, so mm-hmm. they don't serve. Well, and they may it, not it, have to. Yeah, they if they can post bail, they obviously yeah. uh, get out. They're bailed but, out. Uh, yeah, they're bailed out. But if they don't, uh, then they're uh, they're stuck in the in the pokey until uh, the court gets around to bringing them to uh, to the trial. And uh, this kid was nineteen. Um, and, uh, 242 days, uh, he, uh, or 254 days, he sat in there and waited for his day in court. So let's take well, it. Yeah, yeah. They're worried about, you know, flight risk. Oh yeah, sure. Another yeah. crime or did the crime they mm-hmm. commit was how violent was it? Right? Yeah. It depends on what the crime was. So yeah. let's take another phone call. Five, two, two talk is the number calling you on the air. What's going on? Yeah. Hey, um, you know, I'm not a racist person, but so I found, uh, 
reason to love Muslims, okay? All um, right. Yeah, and you better, better listen to this. Um, the question answers the reason, okay? The question is, are we so scared to get on a plane? Are we so scared that we're going to get blown up on a plane that we have to have our uh, ass cavities searched, okay? And that's the number one reason to love Muslims now. And I just happen to be the person that got picked out of the line to get searched. And I got cut off, like, when I was on the radio a couple of days ago about this. So I'm going yeah, to talk about it Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I apologize for that. I, no, I had good. to go to a break. So, you know, yeah, but... no, no, it's all good. Yeah. But, um, so, yeah, we've gone way too far. There's no reason for people to have their hands up other people's butts in order to have to get on a plane. This is absolutely ridiculous. I've, I'm trying to put in a complaint to TSA and they are not required to operate under normal law law enforcement, okay? Um, they're owned by a somewhat foreign agency, um, and they don't operate under the rules of the United States. Um, there's no recourse where I can go complain about what happened to me in line in front of everybody else, you know? Uh, there's nowhere, no recourse for the guys. They, 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 they can put their hands in anywhere they want, and get away with it, and it's not cool. Um, well, basically, they, fifty-one thousand employees and a seven and a half billion dollar budget. That that gives you some. <laughs> Give us some yeah. idea of who it is. Yeah. You know, they asked, they asked me if I wanted to go back in a little room, and, and he said, "Yeah, yeah, you know, you can go back in a little room with me." And I was like, "No, you know, you better do what you're going to do out here in front of everybody else." You know, so I, I don't agree with it at all. We've gone way too far, and I think the airport system and TSA is absolutely. 100% pathetic. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for the call. All right. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I wonder, uh, one of the things I, and I've always said this about air travel, because I fly from time to time, and I've got one of those things that, uh, you know, if you go down to the uh, airport and uh, you give them a bunch of information about you, they uh, put you on the thing where you don't have to take your shoes off or your belt off or, <laughs> you know, all that stuff. You you guys still got to put your computer and stuff in the bin, but you don't have to get half undressed to go through the line. And um, but I've still said that, you know, the TSA guys, they they go through your luggage in plain sight. Uh, there's a reason they do that. It's to exactly what the caller is talking about. It makes makes you feel safe that they're looking through other people's luggage. You know, they're they're uh, you know moving your underwear around. They're you know doing all this even though they got their gloves on. But uh, I don't know what they pick up in one suitcase and put in another one with the gloves. But uh, yeah, they they don't change them between uh, shifts. I know that. Well, well, the amazing thing is, you know, the U.S. Air Marshal was formed in 1960. The budget's eight hundred and five million dollars, but there's only three thousand of them. So yeah. you know what? What double their budget? You yeah. know, sure. Increase that to ten thousand because there's mm -hmm. ten thousand commercial flights a day in your country. Yeah, right. And then get rid of the TSA. I mean, mm -hmm. it, you know, I, mm -hmm. I I just think that it, it, yeah. it's it's been a conditioned response by you know mm -hmm. homeland security for people to accept law enforcement in their life yeah. and that's what i think it well, is. well and, yeah. and every time you turn around there's some tv station that got a gun through customs or a gun yes. through uh you know the tsa or took it apart or something and now they're talking about 3d uh screening uh you know of your luggage and things like that but but uh yeah to uh pick somebody out of line and subject them to a uh, physical uh you know search of your interior uh, I think goes way over the line, and I I sympathize with the the caller uh, that uh, there should be some recourse to that as to why was I picked out and what what did you see and uh, you know that made you feel that I was some kind of a threat to uh, the people on, other people on this on this plane. So I would I would uh, encourage him to go as far as uh, he legally can. Uh, to uh, rectify, <laughs> rectify. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of this was the predicate that you know <laughs> mm -hmm. that that the TSA couldn't uh, ad, uh, adjudicate decisions on who to pick out in the line by what how they looked. Sure. 
Yeah, uh, that's profiling. You know, you yeah, you don't pull a, you. you don't pull a guy with a turban out and uh, well, you know let the guy with the AR-15 over his back uh, go yeah. through. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, an eighty-year-old woman in a wheelchair. Yeah, you know. right. Yeah, I, or some ten-year-old kid or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah, it's wrong to profile her as someone that should just go through. You know, like that's kind of that. You know, they could cut down on the cost, the time, and everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, if if they would legitimately look, don't don't profile people. For being a terrorist, but why not profile people for not being a terrorist? I was going to say, yeah, that, uh, you know, rather than just randomly picking people out in the hopes that you'll yeah. somehow yeah. deter a, ter a, a terrorist, a true terrorist from uh, being there. And, um, you know, I, I think also the fact that they take you into another room where people can't see what's going on, uh, that doesn't deter anybody from anything, you know. So. That's right. So uh, I, 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 the callers got my vote on whatever they can do to, uh, uh, to take care of that or get uh, justice for that, that imposition. I think that's right. All right, that's we got to take a break. Uh, we got to talk to Rush here. So uh, Shane, we got uh, we got a caller uh, calling in. So uh, if you'll take care of that, we'll be right back. Here's Rush. Five minutes for the top of the hour. It's finally Friday. Uh, Tommy, yeah. go off your morning mayor. Shame and Tobin on the line. We will not be here on Monday. Uh, we're going to take the uh, three-day weekend along with uh, most of you. So uh, I'm sure that the uh, uh, the uh, We Care folks at Town Square will put on a quality program for you in our stead. And uh, we'll be back on Tuesday. We're going to start giving away football tickets each uh, week. So uh, for the uh, cats, so uh, stay tuned for that because we'd uh, we'd like for you to win. And uh, let's take some phone calls before we have to go. Five two two talk is the number five two two eight two five five. Caller, you on the morning soapbox? What's up? If those who don't like having to be searched by TSA would simply refuse to go through the search by not flying on the airlines. Mm -hmm. I, I guarantee you the airlines would do something about it really quickly if they were flying a whole bunch of no-profit empty airplanes around because of the fact that people didn't want to fly in their airplane because they had to go through the search. There's also this thing of the elite, the boys treated differently, which I can now pull Rush Limbaugh into that. Rush mm -hmm. Limbaugh is a reformed oxycodone addict. Mm -hmm. And he, he not only did he use the legal stuff from his doctor, he sent out his minions to find it on the street and buy it illegally. If you or me or anybody else probably within the sound of our voices were to do that, we'd still be in jail. Yep, we would be. Uh, uh, Rush Limbaugh never even went to a court meeting. <laughs> No, so that's true. Basically, yeah. what we need to, maybe what we need to do is we need to pass an elite law so that if you get an elite dispensation of some kind from the laws that everybody else has to obey and is, uh, you know, is oppressed by, then, okay, we'll just charge a law a tax to the elite for their special privileges and use that money to pay for everybody else's. All right. Sounds like a deal to me. <laughs> All right. Thanks for the call. Uh, from our text line uh, regarding the Law and Justice Center, how about the awe, uh, the second awe center? I'm in awe of how much they are sucking from my paycheck. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. Sack for short. <laughs> yeah. The new L&J is bull. Uh, costs way too much for taxpayers. Too bad, y'all. Uh, every new subdivision developer should have to pay for the new school buildings they make necessary, not the property owners who have lived here for 30 years or more. Uh, the TSA is a beginning way to restrict our freedom of movement in our own country. So there you are. That brings all our text uh, text lines up to date. Uh, check our chat line over here. See if we got anything on the uh, chat line. Uh, our text uh, app chat, I should say. Uh, clear over there from uh, what we did earlier. So let's take one more phone call, then we got to go. Caller, you are on the air. What's up? Yeah, hi. I'm just calling again about the TSA BS. Sure. I just got done with uh, flying back from someplace, and, and I had a hacksaw uh, frame, you know, that you have a blade and a hacksaw frame. And the hacksaw frame actually folded down a little bit. Yeah. And I put that in my check luggage, and then I took the blade off. Oh, sorry, I took the blade off, and I put the blade in my check luggage, and then I, to keep the weight down because we were close to 50, 
I put the hacksaw frame in my carry-on. Well, as I was going through, of course, they, you know, they see the hacksaw frame in there, and they've got to pull me aside, and they dig, start digging through, taking everything out of my pack. <laughs> right. They find the hacksaw yeah. frame, yeah. and then, they, and then they, they go over and they measure it. Oh, yeah. And they, and they tell me, oh, well, I'm sorry, you can't, you can't take this because it's, over se- it's a tool that's over seven inches. Ah. If it just pulled <laughs> it up to under seven inches, apparently yeah. I could have taken it. And I said, well, what do I do? And they said, well, you got to check another bag to take it. It's like, yeah, I want to spend $40 to, <laughs> yeah, to for, take a, for an additional frame. bag. Yeah. Yeah. You could tell it's a hacksaw frame and it has no blade. Yeah. Well, anyway, I just, I heard the other callers about All right. Today. Hey, it's thanks a lot. A bunch of BS. All right. Thanks a lot for okay, the call. Thanks, Appreciate bye. it. Thanks for listening. <laughs> thanks, All right. Say goodbye, Shane. <laughs> goodbye, Mary. Look forward to Tuesday when we speak again. Have a great weekend. Everyone in the Gallatin Valley, be happy, be safe, and God bless. All right. Thanks for the call. All right, man, uh, we got to go. All right. Uh, hey, we will not be here on Monday. Uh, we'll, we'll see everybody back here on Tuesday, and we're going to have uh, some football tickets to give away on Tuesday. We'll give you all the details uh, back then. So um, until then, uh, we'll see everybody bright and early Tuesday morning at 6 a.m.